Welcome, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of August 11th, already August 11th, 2022, of course. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting with me today digitally through the internet, of course, the one, the only, Players Cup Podcast, Emma Watkins Jr. Howdy, howdy. What's up, everybody? How you doing? I am, I am doing pretty great. I, I am ready to talk about video games, and I'm also ready in like... 12 days or so to listen to the forever story jid's new album which mm. is the thing i care about most in the world i don't think i've ever listened to his material so i'll have to check it out if it's getting your recommendation i definitely have to listen to it i'll say flow he, he's very creative of an individual i kind of explain him as like what if like a hippie like he's like a soulful hippie but he's also like from the trap and sounds like it so Whoa. it's like a very interesting mix but also, you've probably heard of Jid. If you ever heard that enemy song by Imagine Dragons, he's the rapper on that. Oh, then I probably have. So, yeah, so a lot of people know of him, but maybe don't listen to him. So he's very much so worth checking out. I'll definitely check him out, but don't worry. We're not a music podcast because it wouldn't be very long. I don't know too much. But <laughs> we're a video game colleague. It's coming to you every single Friday live on YouTube podcast services. And, of course, you can get it all early and be included on the show over on Patreon.com slash Easy Achievers. Let's get into the show. First off, let's start with rapid fire, and then, of course, we'll get into our questions. But this rapid fire not going to be very rapid because of a few things uh, listed in this thing, and I'm sure me and Emmett will talk in depth about. Let's start with some easy ones. There's apparently a live-action Pac-Man movie in the works. Hollywood Reporter reports on an exclusive that there's a Pac-Man movie in development. Patch of the article reads, the, po- the project will be based on an original idea from Chuck Williams from Sonic the Hedgehog of Lightbeam Entertainment. Baldoni, Manu Gargi, and Andrew Kaloff will produce on behalf of Wayfarer Studios with Tracy Ricerson developing Williams and Tim Kwok will produce on behalf of Lightbeam. I have nothing to add to that. EA and the Pac Man is an Elder Horror. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I, as soon as I read live, I'm like, oh, this is we're gonna have like a Sonic thing again. I'm be, yeah, it's, <laughs> exactly. it's going to be a gritty horror set in the New York Bronx or something. <laughs> EA and the NFL extended their partnership for the continuation of their eSports League, the, NF- the Madden NFL Championship Series. Not too much else with that. Nothing was disclosed about it, so covering it in rapid fire. An incredibly shocking turn of events that for some reason people are reporting on, and a lot of people are talking about, God of War Ragnarok is causing games to move their release dates. Whoa, shit. Damn it. Did you see that coming? <laughs> Let me tell you, if there's one game I thought everyone was going to stay put for and fight head on, it was Ragnarok. <laughs> no. yeah. I expected all of this. this yeah, is yeah, yeah. I, I, I found it very interesting that this was making like kind of the rounds on Twitter and things of that nature. I was like, mm, maybe we have some new people to the industry or something, but this is this is par for the course. If not this, you, you'd move for Call of Duty or, or insert other game. Like You'd, you'd be afraid of something. So mm-hmm. this is not... Uh, not abnormal. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Now, in my docket, I have written Forspoken Drama. Now, if you have been able to avoid this, congratulations, because you did not have to experience this. But, and, and Emmett, you kind of did ha- have to, you did. You were almost I able to kind part. of dodge this. Yeah. But Forspoken uh, released a, I guess you would say, like a teaser kind of trailer, sort of. It was like 30 seconds of audio over some of the gameplay on Twitter and people went to town on it. Um, it, uh, the writing I would not say is fantastic. It sounds kind of like every sort of fish out of water story. Uh, it did not it's sound, Josh that's, it, the thing a lot. that's a great way of putting it. Yeah. If you ever, if you ever watched like justice league or, or, or something like you could, or like Batman v really Superman, fucked. you could, you could tell Josh Whedon's there whenever a line mm-hmm. comes up, you're like, yep, Josh Whedon wrote that. It's very like, uh, oh my god, did I move that with my mind? Like, <laughs> yeah. it's very, um, very, uh, it, it's right behind me, isn't it? <laughs> like, it's like it's very corny, corny lines corny that that's in nature. But people went to, I mean, really went to town on this thing. Uh, Emmett, you yeah. you kind of came in at the at the kind of the tail end of this kind of discourse. I don't really think I teed off it too much because it was. I mean, we know it was bad. I don't think I had anything to add. Um, I saw a very funny um, uh, tweet by Chris Reagan where he he did the same thing, but in God of War, 
So, <laughs> so he remade it, but in God of War, and he was like, "You're telling me I have to talk to my son?" <laughs> like it was very funny. So go check out that if you want to see a kind of a yeah. funny rendition. But people very uh, very much beat this up. Did you have any uh, any uh, sense to throw on this kind of strange occurrence that happened in the industry? I don't know, man. It's weird. Whenever how do how do I say this? It's less it's less an industry thing and more of just an internet thing. Where I think I every agree, now yeah. and then, um on Twitter or TikTok or anything like that, every now and then we will all collectively just decide that something sucks. And it's not enough that it sucks and we go on about our day and find something that's good. We have to make fun of it. And relentlessly. When I first saw the, yeah, relentlessly. Like, I can't tell you how many versions of this, because basically this video got memified where I saw a Dark Souls version, I saw an Undertale version, and it's like, cool, like, it actually takes some, you know, some talent and hard work to memeify this whole thing in less than 24 hours, mind you. But at the same time, I'm like, we all agree. Well, I, I'm still looking forward to Forspoken. You know, despite the dialogue and stuff, the gameplay looks fun. And I like a lot of the cast that's in it. So I'm still looking forward to it. But despite the dialogue, like, if we all agree the dialogue isn't great, isn't that the the thing in your head to just keep scrolling instead of sit there and fixate on it for hours. And that's what people did all day. What? Two days ago at this point. So, um, yeah, it's just one of those things I don't really love. Sometimes we'll just all make fun of something that is just like, it's like we're kicking a dead horse at a certain point. Oh yeah. It, it definitely lasted way too yeah. long. I, I agree yeah, it, on that. It just feels like a weird thing for us to all put our attention into collectively all at once in this way where it's like, uh, there's like other shit that's actually important going on, but I don't know. Maybe that's just because I actually care about Forspoken a little bit and don't wish to make fun of it. But hey, people are going to do what they're going to do. That's the internet. After I'll quickly back you up and then I'll move on. But um, I I agree with you on certain aspects. I agree with you. Like I'm actually still am. Um, tr I am cautiously optimistic about the game because the gameplay does look fun. Like when she is doing things, it looks cool. Um, I can't tell what the game is about, really, uh, because we only kind of see like little pieces of like her doing something. But as but the things I have seen do look cool. The dialogue is very, very bad. But again, I think you hit the nail on the head. Twitter. And this is why I'm very, very, very cautious with Twitter. Like when I use it, I try to be very deliberate because I think people t use it too much and it, it dilutes things. And I think this is an example of people just over and over again, just be like, hey, you know what was funny? How she said a word, and I'm gonna say it again, and I'll add the thing to it. And like, I don't, I don't, and I, and like you said, I, I like the people who put in effort, but like after a while, like, all right, let's move on. Oh, or yeah. you know, crazy, crazy thing. Maybe we get mad about this about something that make you know matters. You know, yeah, yeah, uh, that'd be crazy, <laughs> crazy. I know that's crazy, but I'd love for half of this attention to be in. I don't know, Tencent buying everything or, you know, I, there's a lot of other things I could put that energy towards. But hey, let's make fun of Forspoken, I guess. For sure. For sure. So very fittingly, we're going to have a very kind of funny esque rapid fire here. Um, the last two weeks we've been talking all about Sacred Simple. So almost serendipitously, we're going to be talking about kind of funny here. Um, there was a clip I found uh, again on Twitter. Um, I'm on it way too much. And they brought up an interesting thing that I've really never thought about. And I really wanted to pick your mind. What First off, I don't know what your stance is on, on even the, these two series, really. Um, oh, I know what my stance is, but go ahead and Oh, ask. I'm excited. <laughs> but the the question was brought up, what would be better? The Batman Arkham games? And it was kind of loose. I don't know if a specific game was being mentioned. I didn't watch the full show. I, I just saw, watched the clip. But as far as I understand, like, or, I think it was kind of in general, are the Batman games or the Spider-Man game better etc cetera, etc cetera. certain people took certain stances um and i really when i watched it, i was like oh, that's very interesting i do really want to think about it and i really did think about it and i i would come to a certain conclusion but i want to hear your i want to hear you you first because you have an interesting perspective i think i'll say it like this and i'm going to elaborate slightly but this will tell you everything you need to know my top 100 list my keeping it 100 list my favorite games of all time miles morales is like I want to say it's like number four. Whoa. <laughs> it's it's like it's top 10. Uh, yeah. I'm actually trying to trying to pull it up right now to get an exact listing. But uh, that is number whatever it is. Actually, yeah, it is number four. Yeah. Right behind The Last of Us. Yeah. Um, so that's there. I don't have a single Batman game on this entire list of 100. Games. 
So that tells you everything to know right there. But uh, really out of 100 games, to... you don't have a single Batman Arkham game. Interesting. Nah. And I've played the entire trilogy. Yeah. I haven't played Origins. That's the only one. Um, and that's because while I enjoy the Batman games, I think they are well designed. I think that, you know, the combat's fun. Finding secrets and all that stuff is fun. I feel like the story in those games is told very dryly, um, where it doesn't feel the stories don't feel emotional. They don't feel a lot of characters don't feel expressive. They feel like just the plain archetypes and that's it. Um, it feels very bog standard to me. And I felt that with all the games. Uh, Arkham Knight was a little bit of a slog to get through because I remember I remember this one Batmobile mission where it was literally like popped up 64 cars you got to take out. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm going to be here for the next 10 minutes shooting cars. Um, <laughs> As but, Batman. Exactly. That's my exactly, Batman fantasy. Right? Shooting cars. <laughs> exactly. That's the what I signed up for. Um, but no, uh, yeah, the Batman games are fine. I don't think any of them are bad, but they're kind of in that tier where I kind of think of them a lot in the same light as something like Portal 1 and 2, where they're great games and I enjoy them, but they don't like stick to my ribs specifically. Um, okay. they, they, they're just not resonating with me in the same way that they resonate to a lot of people. So I can accept that they're great games. I think they're great, but it's Spider-Man all the way. It's way more fun just getting around that game than Batman and like I said, the story in both of the Spider-Man games, but especially Miles Morales, hits so hard for me that there's no contest. So to to kind of put a bow on this, I basically agree with almost everything you're saying. I do find emotion the main thing that's lacking in the Arkham series. Um, you don't really feel attached to too many people, probably because the stakes don't really feel any high at any point. Batman's yeah. not going to die, right? So, you know, Robin, you know, has a chance, but he's never really in the game. So you're not really in fear of anyone. And then you don't really get attached to anyone because Bruce is kind of Bruce. He's, you know, he's Bruce Wayne from the other Bruce Wayne stories you've heard. And he's the kind yeah. of the same Batman, too. I would I would say Arkham Asylum probably does the best thing of trying to, like, have you sympathize with him, maybe with with kind of like the scarecrow missions and things like that. I did find myself yeah. finding that. Uh, and I put this on Twitter that I think. Asylum and City are much more better overall games versus Spider-Man because there's so much bloat in the instance of like the crimes mm -hmm. and the yeah. side missions that were just very uninspired. Whereas in Arkham, I, I am very, especially Arkham City, I'm very uh, interested in doing like the side missions and things that way. Sure. I do have to agree though. I believe Miles Morales is probably the better one out of all of them um because i just am way way and it's not even close like way more attached to miles way more attached to like the neighborhood um way more attached to his relationship with a character i don't want to spoil the game so like a, a specific character that you find things out later in the game about and i was yep. incredibly attached to that relationship and how dynamic it was um i loved uh the way they use um specific people in both spider-man and miles Morales to subvert your expectations um i'll i'll lightly spoil it now but the way they were able to hide who the main antagonist was in the first spider-man was brilliant marketing yeah. brilliant like they were never I, they never cool. really gave it away um for people who are super hardcore into it uh and i loved that surprise when i was playing the game. i was like oh this is gonna be awesome but um i i i, I agree i think the first two are much more complete especially compared to spider-man but miles beats them all almost probably no contest hell yeah 400%. Blue boxes on Overwatch will not be available for sale past August 30th, so do with that what you will. <laughs> and uh, I found this very fun, although uh, I am annoying when these things are brought up. But uh, if you ever w listen to Kind of Funny, they of course have a PSI Love You, which is a PlayStation podcast. And they released a uh, kind of like a uh, college basketball esque seeding of the playstation's best indie darling is the exact exact name of this contest i would say and yep. they've got some they have a lot i will not name them all but they have a lot of games on here and it's very interesting i think they are going to do this over one episode which uh, shout that's that's gonna possible. be a, that's gonna be long but hey yeah I, you can do it uh that would be very hard um but there are a couple things i wanted to shout out and also i wanted to ask you are there, first off, anything that uh, you want to just bring up? And second, is there something that you find that is missing? That is just... Uh, I 
feared this. I because I I heard them make the call to add stuff to this list. I had forgotten about it. So in the middle of last night, I like wrote into the form real quick and I added Risk of Rain two. And what do I not see on here? Risk of Rain two is not on this <laughs> list. Which is fair. They probably made the bracket like yesterday or something like that, or you know they needed time to make it look all nice, but. What the fuck is Graceful Explosion Machine? You could have taken that off for us. Oh, there's a couple where I'm like, come on. And there's a few that I'm like, is that an indie game? Yeah, a couple of these games have a lot of people working on them. Um, if I'm, Yeah. So there's a couple where I'm like, is, I don't know if that calls it an indie game. But, you know, we've never really identified what an indie game is. So I can't blame them too much. Um, I mean, if you want to be specific, technically an indie game is just independent Some, publisher yeah not a big publisher behind it that is so true you take but off, you take off that means dead. ubisoft is an indie right <sighs> so like oh wait is, uh what is it what's that game Cyan not cyanar wild hearts first off the that's an amazing game. game that should be on this list i think is it not on this list? yes yeah, it's, it's on this list it is um uh, yeah, i have a right uh top right triangle nobody saves uh, the world oh 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 you're right jesus there you go there you go uh, i can't believe i missed um, that but yeah i'm trying to think like what What's that World War Two game or World War One game that Ubisoft made? I oh, uh, Violent of uh, of uh, vi Jesus, Valiant, Valiant, Valiant Heart. Heart. Yeah, Valiant yeah, Heart. Yeah, yeah, it was a great game. Yeah, cry. Yeah, that that was a really good game. Um, but I think people just conflate that as an indie just because it has that aesthetic to it. We're really, you know, big publisher behind it. So if you want to say, oh, big publisher, not indie, you could take off Little Nightmares too. You could take off a handful of these games. Can a Bridge of Spirits? Ooh, I don't know about that. Indie? <laughs> that feels too much of a way too polished game. right yeah mm. it's not even a polished thing it's just like what's the scope of what you're going for i think that if they want to get the that's a good point i, I misused that yeah I, I didn't necessarily mean yeah. polished more as like i think a, I, I think over 50 people worked on that game or something like that i don't remember i don't remember yeah. uh i would have to look it up but like you know i'd say hollow them. knight i'd say hollow knight and canna bridge of spirits have the same amount of polish but the scope is different yeah um so yeah i some of these just get me really annoyed. Okay, no disrespect to Bastion. Bastion, it's on my top. What are you about games. to say? What are you about to say? We could have taken that off for Risk of Rain too. <laughs> so oh, I'm saying. no! I think I think no, people no. just said fuck Risk of Rain. We don't care. We don't know what that is. And I wrote it in, and they did not. I probably just wrote it in too late, so I'm not too too upset. But God damn it, some of these I'm just like, who cares about these? Like, let, I will oh, say, wait, why, never why mind. is Fall Pause. Guys on here? Well, go ahead. Fall, Fall Guys is no longer an indie. It was an indie. As soon as you get bought by Epic, you lose your rights. To yeah, I don't think we should add Fall Guys to this, even if it wasn't. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't fuck with that. Not really but in the spirit of an indie game. I think. One thing I can pull for in the similar spirit of Risk of Rain 2, Slay the Spire is on here. Is it? And I, I, It is. Fuck uh, yeah. Circle, right in the left, uh, next Iconoclast. I love slay the spire i've talked about it a handful of times here and there that game is one of the greatest games of all time um and it's in the similar vein of risk of rain 2 where it's very uh how do i say it's a roguelike and it's very specific to you know it's it's all about getting the rundown and when you get a good run it feels incredible so slay the spire is a good one um thank you by the way for recommending that i I yeah, haven't stopped yeah. playing it since you recommended it to me a month ago or something like that. So yeah, good. It's it is such good. a good game. Um, I want to shout out, thank God Hades is on here. I am yeah, very good. much, that is probably my winner out of all this, although Journey is very close. Oh. Um, there's a couple. I don't even know if I have a winner. This go, is gone weird. Home, special place in my heart. Cuphead yeah. feels strange to be on a PlayStation's best indie darling thing, but I, I understand it's not. It it is identified as a PlayStation indie. It is just PlayStation as a system spec indie. Um, yeah, exactly. Although it is possessive s, so you would think it is. It doesn't matter. Um, I think that's all I have. Celeste is is a good one I want to bring up. That's like, damn that that could win definitely. Um, Among Us shout out to just being on there because I think that was made by like six people or something like that. So like, oh yeah, Among Us big props to them. I will say. I do not believe Axiom Verge is on here. That's um, fine. <laughs> oh, how dare you, sir? No, no, no disrespect to Axiom Verge, but like it's a Metroidvania when like 
what like a good quarter of these are already metroidvania so if you have to chop off something i guess so bottom, it's gonna be that i guess so and um, and I, you can tell and maybe i'm wrong about this but you could tell greg miller put something on this list tell tall is the walking dead that would not be on this list if that man did not put that on there i would be very I, shocked if that was like like voted for a lot i'll say this i love here's the thing Walking Dead's gonna lose because it's up against Hollow Knight, which is Knight bullshit. Is by the way, I would yeah, that needs like, to be like at least quarterfinals or something. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But like for me, The Walking Dead has so much resonance to me where I would probably vote for The Walking Dead over Hollow Knight. Even I would though too. I know Hollow Knight is great, but goddamn, I I wouldn't have even put Telltale on here. I would have gone for something more indie because, like I said, a lot of these feel too big to be an indie. Yeah, I, I would say I agree. As, yeah. I would just really quickly say, as far as things that I would pick as winners, Slay the Spire would get up there, but then at a certain point, it would be the Forgotten City versus Slay the Spire for me, and that's a Sophie's choice that terrifies me. <laughs> that is two <laughs> Emmett ass games, Forgotten bro. City. So like, oh yeah, I I wouldn't even say that the Forgotten City is an Emmett ass game, but it is because I like the story. Like, so I and I, I only say that is because like when I think of Forgotten City, I think of Emmett because you like champion oh, that game. About it. Like you championed that game, bro. Like you're the reason I played it. And oh I, well, and I yeah. played it, and I was like, "Damn, this is fucking good." And then that yeah. ending, yeah, it's that ending. Um, maybe the best ending in any medium, but um, yeah, that that's where I'm at. I'm looking at a lot of these, and I'm like, those two are really the ones that get me. Of course, I love Gone Home, just like you talked about The Walking Dead as well. Inside, I would also say I have a lot of time chopping if, off. But if we if yeah. if we can, because I'm actually kind of interested. Um, Ooh, okay. can you, can you pick one title out of each category and then we'll see who wins as a fast way of doing this? Okay. So one from the circle, one from cross triangle and square. Yes. So one from each uh, category. Cause we seem to be having fun. I'm having fun. Achievers. We we're loose. We're loose on this show. We're loose on this show. We're I'm calling an audible. No, no better man to have this conversation with than when Emma's walking junior. So I'm gonna do this very quickly. Um, fair. But I want to know. I, I, I'm i dying to know. And I, I apologize. I have it on here. You can't fucking see it. You can't see it. But oh, yeah. I, I have it on the screen if you want to see if you can read it. I'll see if I can save this even. Hold on. I'll see if you want to like... um, Because you can make it full screen if you go to their tweet, which I have linked right That's here. That's true. Yeah, if you can actually I'll, put yeah, that I'll on the that thing for me. Or I'll, I'll just put it on the dock. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Put it on, um, right, right on the dock for me. And then if people want to look around with us when they're listening, then we can, oh, wait, uh, I have to get access. I'm just going to send it to you through chat. That's fine, too. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, maybe they can check check out their Twitter to see what's up with that. But yeah, to, to say one from each of these, like I said, Circle Division, uh, it's between Slay the Spire and Forgotten City. And right now, I'm going to tell you right now, just a little sneak peek that I haven't announced yet. Um... At some point this year, I am planning on doing amendments to my keeping it 100 list. Okay, I'm putting I'm putting both Slay the Spire and the Forgotten City on that list. But since I have to make a choice right now, I'm going to say the Forgotten City, um, just because that story just hits so fucking hard. It is one of the greatest stories, and maybe not one of the greatest stories ever, but definitely one of the most satisfying endings ever in any medium. So shout out to that. Um, for the cross division, I'll be honest, a lot of these games I did not play, uh, like Sifu, Kenna, didn't play that. I, I think I've only played Limbo, A Short Hike, and Fire Firewatch and Gone Home. So really, for out of here, it'd be Gone Home versus, where is it, uh, A Short Hike. And for me, I would say, I would say Gone Home. Gone Home's too impactful for me. Um, I love a short hike. That's also on my top 100. As is Gone Home. But I've not played short should... hike, so I I I can't say anything yeah. about it. A short hike's great. Like it's li it's like what seven bucks play, it, and it's literally 90 minutes long. God, Circle um, is nuts. Holy shit. Yeah, Circle. Celeste, is Forgotten City, yeah, it, Slay it, the crazy. Spire. Like my God, how do I? I have to. Oh wait. Let's do it that way. So I just did my circle. Forgotten City is mine. So you do your circle, then we'll both do our cross. Okay. So yeah. I will have to I will have to say Celeste. 
Um, it is a great game. Soundtrack. Um, it tackles something that's pretty rare, although not too rare now, but it, it's, it's pretty rare. It, it's very deep into like just mental health in general. The self-doubt that a lot of people have. That, I mean, the game is about almost like self-doubt and just your overall well-being. And I, I love I loved that game. Uh, it's I'm not a 2D platformer, so it's a surprise that I liked it. It, it is that's shocking to me because I am not the I'm not a platformer guy really. I don't really jive with them very much. But this game was very special. I loved it, and it was very nice. And again, that soundtrack is nuts. Like it is so good. Yeah. Um, and very followed very closely by Forgotten City. I very much did enjoy that game. It's very good, but it is a shame. Um, I have small, small nitpicks where Celeste was almost a perfect game for me. I will say before we're done with Circle, Doki Doki Leisure Club, shout out to that game. That's just a I, yeah, big ass shout out. That's the probably that, that might be the most unique game released in the last five years. Oh, easily, sure, the, sure. easily, easily. Definitely, definitely. So yeah, just shout out to that game. I love it too. But we're, Sophie's choice here. We got to throw one of the babies out with the bathwater. Um, and so going across, uh, it's easy for me. Across, yeah, I, I'm gonna say Gone Home just because. Me too. Like literally that game i got my first mm. computer the year that game came out and i got a printer with it because i was going to college i sold the printer to get a steam gift card so i can play gone home on that new computer. nice <laughs> nice so like i just think big memories with that game. so i have not played a lot of these so i i can't sit here and be like oh, you know i play actually a good bit i played probably a little less than half and I will say pretty, it's very much between Gone Home and Death Store, and Death Store was so fun, so it's going to be really hard. But Gone Home has a special place, because just the environment and the dialogue and me learning about that story, I, I, think, I, I think I have to pick Gone Home. Fair. All right, I respect that. Um, ooh, God damn it, I just saw Triangle. Tri I thought Triangle was going to be easy, but it's actually going to be a little difficult. It is um, only easy because mine is is a perfect experience, whereas like everything else, I have like slight problems with. But like, yeah. yikes! Like it 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 is hard, but I had such a bonding experience with the game I, I chose. All right, so just to say the things that I've played out of Triangle, I've played. You could have taken off Fat Princess too for fucking Risk of Rain too, but that's whatever. I've played but, Fat ag Princess again, again to be again. I told you I would be annoying. Why are there two guacamelees? Why? Yeah, the why the are there two guacamelees? One or two. It's just like, one or two on and now. something else. Like, why are there two of them? Man, Sorry. I am going to burn down their studio. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, we uh, are you, going you, to be arsonists. Kind of heard that, or that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, if the studio burns down after I recorded this, that was good. <laughs> um, Fat Princess I've played. Guacamelee I've played. Inside. Bastion. Journey. And I played Nidhogg. Nidhogg's actually a pretty good pick. I, I've played everything also, you listed. I played Rocket League. I did not play oh, Bug yeah, Snacks. Played League, yeah. yeah, that's yeah, all. Oh, and I played Guacamelee. I think you mentioned that though. Yeah, I've played I've played a lot of Triangle. I've only not played maybe two of them. I tried Nobody Save the World, and it's not that it's bad. It's just I, I got sidetracked with like work and things. So like I I need to go back mm -hmm. to it. I, I want I very much want to. Fair, yeah. I I played the great many of these. I even put a decent amount of time in a Hollow Knight, but uh, it's really no contest. For as much as I love a lot of these games, like Fat Princess is on my all time list. So is Guacamelee. So is like I said, Bastion is, but it's Bastion is like number ninety seven or something. It's very low. It hurts so, that Bastion and Journey are like that hurts right. is like their first together like. And I think Journey wins like almost no contest, but ba like Fashion yeah. deserves at least like to win the first set. Eighties <laughs> on here, and it's going pretty far. It's up against Fez. Like, yeah, no that was a Fez, like, that was a knockout punch in the first round. <laughs> Not even close. Exactly. So, but for me, the one I would pick out of this whole thing, Telltale's The Walking Dead. So too much resonance for me. So literally, my 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 semifinal, or it's it's technically quarterfinal. Sorry, my quarterfinals mm -hmm. would be uh walking dead and hades and it has to be hades i love the walking dead so much i love it so much but i can't not say hades because i just fucking love that game i could not stop playing it. i just couldn't i kept i could not to put the game in. like it was very much the definition of like all right one more run but it it's so so close like i i remember i think the walking dead is the first game i cried at I'm pretty sure. I think I was like Yo. 14 or something, um, and I was playing it, and I, 
I, I cried a lot at the end of that game and it was amazing it was an amazing journey oh my god i'm kind of talking myself into actually it it winning over hades but just the gameplay is so solid in hades and i was so invested in everyone's um experience although I'll clementine and um and uh and lee's journey will always have a special place in my heart let me tell you i all due respect to hades i've played a decent chunk of hades i understand why it's great and that it's great i started playing the walking dead in the middle of the walking dead fever over my whole household because we all just watch the show together so me and my little brother would play the games together and we have played every single episode of that game for, since it came out so it's been like what close to a decade once season four came out yeah like that's i we've grown up together with that franchise I plan on naming my daughter Clementine if I'm ever I'm lucky enough to have one. Um, and, you know, whenever I think of The Walking Dead, I also conflate that my love of the game with my love of my little brother, because that's like a big bonding thing we have. And so, like, literally when I did my um, live stream, when I was revealing my top 100 list, when I got The Walking Dead, I started crying because it just got me very emotional because I love that series and it just makes me it's just a lot of memory. So that's what everything I'm voting for rather than just, oh, Hades is fun. <laughs> talking me into it, bro. You're talking me into it. I, I it's hey, very personal experience though. It's very, very hard. And I think it would change by the day. I, I always say this. My top ten games changes almost every day. So like I, I make the list, but I'm always like, eh, this could change. Like eh, eh, eh. I, I like it's all it, it's yeah. always an ever living being and, and it's very hard. It is very hard to choose because it's almost like story or gameplay it, it, it almost boils down mm -hmm. to that like it, did i exactly. did i enjoy my the story experience more or did i enjoy the rock solid gameplay of hades more and it's so it's so fucking hard i don't know i don't really have an answer but in t in sake of quickness i will have to stick with hades i guess yeah what's even harder is square i gotta be honest i Actually, I've played some stuff in Square. Um, Square I is a, a, my least caring category. Everything else has dang. some pretty great games. This one, I this is like a. Eh, eh. I'll just say mine because I'm I have nothing really to add to any of this. Um, and I know I know everyone listening to this is like um Undertale's on there. What the fuck? I haven't played Undertale, so I I, I yeah, can't maybe. I can't tell you. But um, I I love Overcooked, and it would be Overcooked and um, uh, Severed. Uh, would be like the the quarterfinals, and I probably give it to Overcooked just because I had so yeah. much fun with the game. Although this is a uh, this is a te cheating a little bit. Um, I played it with my wife, and that was a great bonding experience that we did. Technically, she was my girlfriend at the time, so like it was it was just a very fun sure. experience to have a game that together we were yeah <laughs> yeah, and we were r rolling through. We wouldn't leave a mission until it was three stars, so we just kept going and going. It was very fun. So I I, I go I go Overcooked for sure for Square. But again, it's not a very contested category for me. Yeah, uh, Overcooked is one that's up there for me as well. As far as other things I've even touched on here, like Fall Guys I've played a little bit of. Uh, what, what's the other one I just saw? Uh, oh, my God. Resogun's oh, an incredible Quest. game. Yeah, Resogun's a good game. I've played a decent bit of Resogun. Costume Quest I've played, I played a that one. lot of. I beat Costume Quest, so out of all these, I've only beaten Costume Quest and Overcooked, but I played a little bit of Rogue Legacy, played a little bit of, you know, a couple games on here. What I want to do is be like, oh, because I played Guacamelee 1 and loved that so much, I'd probably like Guacamelee 2, but I'm not going to really count that. Same thing for Little Nightmares. I love Little Nightmares 1. I think that game is great, but I haven't played 2. So out of all of these, I might have to just say Overcooked as well. That is a staple of parties i go to whenever i bring the ps4 is either jackbox or overcooked so you know that's that's always going to be something that i like and it you know once again family and friend memories are always going to be stronger than oh the gameplay's fun but overcooked has legitimately pretty good gameplay so who the fuck yeah, put after wild. party on this it, greg <laughs> I, I really like that game. Who, who put who put the fucking after party in there it, it, like it, that doesn't it barely beats anything in, in this game like, i don't yeah. know I guess you have there's to have a so bottom, many, but there's so many games that I'm like, yeah. this, that's not on there again. I don't want, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't want to be a dick, but. man. I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm very salty. I'm gonna in email fact, them. Oh, you know what? Okay, so you got all those indies on here. Where the fuck is? I'm okay. I'm looking at my top 100 list. 
Deep Rock Galactic could have gone on there. That's fu- it, actually that probably doesn't feel like an indie game, but I think it technically is. I don't know. <laughs> Torchlight Two could have gone on there. Damn it! This is That's not an great- indie, but it is interesting that Minecraft is not in there. But again, that that has gone so oh. far. But it launched as an indie game. Like it originally was I- a indie game, but it can be argued by the time it got the consoles, like they were huge by that time. So like, it's hard to really I'll- say. Yeah, by the time I got the consoles, that was more or less a Microsoft game at that point. Yeah. Uh, well, by the time I got the PS4, PS3 and all that it stuff. Was it was still very cool. Microsoft. Even when it came to PS4, I, I feel like people really were like, it's mm-hmm. kind of still an Xbox so, game, though. It felt it was strange, and, it's, and it seems strange to say that now, but like when they bought them, it was almost kind of like a no-brainer. Like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, it just you, when you think of Minecraft, for, for whatever reason, you think of the 360. and yep. But it started on PC, and it was like a beta. And shit, like, I don't know. Yep, exactly. I'm right there with you. Also, I will point out, there's no PSVR in here, but Static, one of my favorite VR games, just hands down. So I wish that was on here. Very short indie puzzle experience in VR. Love that game. Also, where the fuck is SteamWorld Dig? Steam yeah, SteamWorld Dig. Steam uh, which one? One or two? I only played the first one. Two. two. Two is the one I would say because it makes a lot of improvements to the gameplay that even that make it even more fun to play. But really, either one would have been great. Uh Really should have got some representation there. Um, and yeah, I maybe would say Shadow Warrior 2, but I know that Shadow, the Shadow Warrior trilogy, modern day series, people can take it or leave it. Um, also, if we're putting Telltale Walking Dead up here, we could have taken off Guacamelee 1 or 2 for fucking Tales from the Borderland. Oh, like, Tales from Borderland is some of the best writing in video games to me. Exactly. Um, especially if yeah, you uh, say comedically. Like comedically, it's some of the best out there. It might be the funniest video game I've played. Period. Hey, other than the South Park games, like it, it's really those three, and it's like I need to beat South Park. That's they're great. Yeah. They're great games. It's hell, fucking hilarious. I mean, it's South Park. It's you're playing a South Park show basically, but it's a for video sure, game. For sure. So yeah, yeah. Good bracket. Uh, I'm gonna be really annoyed listening to this podcast tomorrow. Oh, I'll be fuming. But like, I you know what? You know, I might get who in the cares? Chat today and be like, "Where's Risk of Rain 2? And just spam it in chat. Just keep spamming it until eventually someone looks at you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll see about it. All right, moving. Uh, moving. On. Oh, do you have a, a one winner just to cap it all out? Do you have oh. the one winner? Ooh, it's Hades for me. Uh, my one winner probably has to be The Walking Dead. Yeah. For as much as I love all these other games, I have emotional things tied into The Walking Dead at this point. So I just yeah. Can't, if I, I could have it, if I could have it my way, it would be Hades, Walking Dead, like one and two, like. Like they're mm-hmm. so close, it's it's even it's hard to even tell you like which one I, I would For prefer. Sure. I'll say The Walking Dead would probably go up against The Forgotten City, though. That's that's what I could probably say. Um, but yeah, Walking Dead wins hands down for all the reasons I've said. <laughs> I'd like to begin the show with a single question that I ask my co-host every single week, and that is, what have you been playing? We're beginning the show 40 minutes in. No, 38 uh, minutes in, <laughs> we are beginning the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, but, hey, good for you. I do actually have some interesting things that I've been playing. Um, what I was hoping that I would have to talk about is me playing Rumbleverse, because I tried to wake up at 11 to play that when the servers went live. I uh, did not do that, <laughs> as we've we talked about right before the show. I woke up right before this podcast started. Um, but I have been playing something that I've talked about previously on here. I finally got around to it. I just ripped off the Band-Aid. That is... Can I scroll down and see it? Where? The, where oh, there it is. Uh, Stranger Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin. Oh, my I God, you're playing it. it. You bought this playing. three weeks ago, and you finally <laughs> cracked it open, and you're playing the game. Good to... Exactly. Um, yeah, that's the main one I've been playing. Uh, I got some other small stuff. I've talked about Dusk on Players Club recently but i beat dusk uh so real quick i'll just say dusk is great if you like boomer shooters if you like the quake era of first person shooters uh play dusk it's on switch now it's been ported uh but god that game is incredible and that's definitely making it on my top 100 list as well that game is one of my favorite shooters now um so yeah go play that one but the bulk of the conversation i want to get to stranger paradise because i have a very weird critique about it uh the main reason i wanted to play this game because like i said not a final fantasy person at all never played any of those games except the city of fighting game on psp fuck yeah like 
Exactly. Um, so I wouldn't call myself a fan of the franchise, but the energy of this game was just dripping in like janky PS3 nostalgia in a way that is like so absolutely my shit. Like one of my favorite YouTube videos of all time is this game is this video from Thor High Heels called Mysterious PS3 Games. And it's like a two and a half hour video of him just like going through a bunch of random PS3 games and like just just nostalgic over the weird graphics and just the weird like vibe and art styles of all these weird games. Stranger Paradise falls into that type of game perfectly, despite me playing it on a PS5. Um, but the weird thing is, there's a lot of like things in here where it's like, like there's parts of the dialogue that are just strange in a way that's like, are they doing this on purpose? <laughs> like, like, it's just very weird. This is one part where like you're talking to the king and he addresses everyone in your party and he says everyone's name, but he said they zoom into each face as they say the name, but two of the faces are zoomed in on the wrong name. <laughs> So it's like Jed, and then they zoom in on the guy who's not Jed. Ash, and they zoom in on the guy who's not Ash. And then they go back to Neon, and they zoom in on Neon. It's like, what was that? <laughs> so it's like, I feel like they just have these things in here to just like get small chuckles here and there. But that type of stuff, like the weird, the weird like badness of the writing and the weird badness of like a lot of the aesthetics and stuff are kind of dulled by the fact that the game is fun to play. <laughs> like as a game, it's good. Like a lot of upgrade systems, a lot of skill trees, a lot of a lot of options in combat. It's actually pretty overwhelming how many options you get. Uh, so it feels like, all right, this being like a ironic, weird, bad uh, kind of like RPG is dulled by the fact that it's actually fun. It's a legitimately good game. So it's like, I don't know, it's weird. I, I don't know how to parse it, but I will say I'm going to keep playing it because I am enjoying it. I have a question. Um, I haven't been able to ask this to somebody mainly because I, I wanted to do it on a show. Fair. And I wanted someone who knew video games, and you do. And I want you okay. to be—I want you to see if you can really, honestly say yes or no to this. Is it intentionally bad? Is the writing intentionally bad? Do you think I the writer feel... was like, "I know what I'm doing here," or <laughs> did they go, "Oh, I'm writing gold," but not in the way he <laughs> thought? <laughs> I have a feeling that. The only reason it feels intentionally bad is because at the end of the day, the game is good. Like it is fun to play. It is a quality product. That's, that's that why sense. it's. It, I've never had a game recommended so much, then followed by it's not good. Like that's that's <laughs> like that. I've never seen more people recommend a game and go, it's not great. But I think everyone should play it. It's like what the fuck? Like it's very unique. People say to play the game, but they admit that it's not good. So it's like I was always oh, curious. No. Like, does it, it, it? Since the gameplay is so good, I'm curious if it was intentional. And I want to probably say no. Like I, I don't. I don't think it probably was. But it does seem that way when I watch them talk. I'm like, you had to have. Well, I mean, they watched the game, so like they had to have known. Right? Uh, yeah, I. I think they had to have known because like just the way things are written and like it's it's when people say the writing and such is bad, it's bad in ways that are like either <clears throat> either things got lost in translation or things got like like they ran out of time to polish things to a certain degree. Like it's that type of bad, but it's also like there's a Final Fantasy game. There's no way to just push this out the door because the gameplay's too fun for this to feel like some janky broken mess. And, you know, the graphics are very well polished. Like, there, are, you can see pores in people's skin and all that shit. Like, this is a very pretty game. So, like, it doesn't feel cheap. It just feels... It feels janky aesthetically rather than technically. <laughs> and so, it's, it's just a really weird vibe that is carrying on. And I think that's why people are like, oh, it's a bad game. Where I don't think it's a bad game. I think the actual... As a product, it is sufficient. As a piece of art, the argument for it being bad holds a lot more water um, because it is not in line with many of the aesthetic things that we think of with our stories and whatnot and with characters and whatnot. It's doing a lot of strange things there, but I think 
I think something being janky artistically rather than technically is literally the most fascinating thing you could tell me about a game. <laughs> so like that you're saying it's not miserable to play, but it's super weird everywhere else. Fuck yeah, I will hop on that. Um, so if you if you like the idea of like what is this weird game doing thematically, but the gameplay is still good and fun, yeah, go ahead and hop into this. I would definitely say if you like melee combat games, if you like your, I wouldn't say Dark Souls, but maybe something closer to your Neos, your your lock on combat systems, um, it's definitely good for that. But don't go into this expecting like the greatest story of all time. It is definitely strange. I wouldn't even say go into this expecting like a Bayonetta or something or like a Devil May Cry. It's it's a tier. I don't even want to say it's a tier below. It's a tier away <laughs> from that. Far away. Uh, yeah, definitely. But uh, it's very entertaining. I'm having a blast. And I li- I really quick like how it's segmented as well, where it's mission to mission. It's not just one continuous thing like A Last of Us or something. Um, So I'm able to literally I've been playing it in the middle of the night after I get home from work. So I'll get home at like 2.30. I'll play a mission. It's 3 a.m. And I'm like, all right, I'm good for now. I'm going to go to sleep, come back for another mission. So it's really easy to segment like that. And I like that. Okay. Fascinating stuff. I, I, I've i always thought about picking it up, but I just highly doubt I would play it. And there's too much. Even with nothing coming out in the past, like, three months, it just if I just have too much going on. And I'm like, I'm not going to play this game and hope it's good. So, like, I've just kind of stayed away. Although I do enjoy watching clips of people. It's definitely a game I like watching because it's just, it's hilarious. Uh, when the guy puts his iPod on and listens to music and walks away, it's fuck. I mean, that's some of the funniest stuff I've ever seen. There's, it's not just that, because I thought, oh, okay, it's just going to be these early scenes that are going to be like that. The whole game won't be. No, the whole game's like that. (laughs) Literally, like, every time you go back to the main city, there's like a guy at the hotel who's like, oh, the king already made a reservation for you and your posse. And he's like, do you want to sit down and take a load off? And the character you're playing, Jack, is just like, (laughs) And then the hotel guy's like, I knew you'd say that. Come on in. (laughs) And it's like, what? He didn't say a word. (laughs) It's it's very weird, interesting, strange, but it's it's exactly the type of vibe I'm digging. So I'm gonna keep playing it. I will definitely beat it at this point because it's it's very easy to play. So I'm enjoying it. I have been it's playing not an easy game though. I will say that real quick. Yeah, I, I did hear. Hard. I did hear. Actually, it was pretty difficult. Um, yeah, I was stuck in that first boss for a good two hours, but oh jeez. I, I have <laughs> not really been playing much. Just like last week, I I went back into Destiny to kind of prep for the new season. Just do some random things and, and just get ready for the new season that launched, I believe, the 23rd. Um, we're having a showcase the 22nd, revealing what's going to be, what to expect for the future of Destiny. Probably a look at a new subclass or something. We'll, we'll have to see then. But And then uh, and that's also prepping for the day one raid that's going to happen. Um, me and my clan will be playing that, so I'm excited for that. Aside from that, I'm waiting to get back to Cult to the Lamb. So I, bought, I actually bought that this morning. And I very much want to play it. I've seen so many things. The reviews were pretty positive. Uh, I saw the gameplay. As soon as I saw like the aesthetic and the gameplay, I was like, I have to at least try this. Very reasonably priced, too, at $24.99. Go, everyone go check it out. Watch the trailer. It is, again, recently, very reasonable. $24.99, I feel like this experience, as long as you're into this, what it's delivering, which it seems like a, a demonic Animal Crossing, go for it. It looks very fun. So I'm going to try this out and... Uh, I, the only thing I haven't seen is like the straight up gameplay. Like I, I, I do not know what I'm doing outside of the little village area. So that's what I'm excited about. Yeah, I respect that. Rumor roundup. This isn't really a rumor, but I figured I'd include it here because it's speculation. And uh, according to a recent earnings report. And reported on by IGN Square Enix upon re- uh, reporting on their baffling recent selling of their Western Studios mentioned that this is phase one of its change of business. Phase two will include a stern look at their portfolio of studios and they will be deciding on whether to train full ownership or allow other companies to buy stakes in these studios. They ended with the transition to allow more focus on their Japanese studios and titles. Another justification was brought up uh, that this reconstruction will ensure other studios do not quote cannibalize end quote other projects undoubtedly referring to marvel's avengers high development costs and astounding low returns mm. i don't really have too much to add because we've talked about this for much we actually talked about this in depth about two weeks ago with iso christian and i find it's almost obvious square is selling to someone the question is who 
Um, I th I don't think you sell those studios and the IP for that amount of money, and not and you're not trying to court something. You're not trying to get something out of someone else. Whereas maybe a big figure sell. Who knows? I do worry for the European studios. Um, they are might be yeah. up next to be gone. They might want to just be Japan, and and I do see Sony picking them up. Uh, to um. To really back up their we're the Japanese company again, whereas they they haven't really lost that title, I would say, but they are definitely less exclusive. Yeah, they've definitely been less with Xbox's very, very, very um, serious pursue into the Japanese market. I mean, for Jesus Christ, they have Tales, they have Persona now, like they they have very Japanese titles that years ago I would have said is crazy. I'm never going to see that on Xbox, and we're getting that now. So. I th I do yeah. think Sony is the interesting party here, but again, we've talked about this before. I have not heard your thoughts on this entire debacle, though. I mean, what what do you think? Um, it I was gonna say it makes me upset. It doesn't make me upset. It makes me a little annoyed. Square Enix has always undervalued their uh, non Japanese studios and talent. Yep. Um, they are if it ain't Final Fantasy, they don't really care about it. If it ain't Kingdom yep. Hearts or all those very specific franchises, they don't care. So. Uh, it, it broke my heart a little bit when every when all the you know my, my, it, what is it Eidos Montreal all that yeah, stuff Eidos yeah Crystal yeah um, which you know it, it broke my heart to see them not care but it also made me excited because if there's one like publisher or just cavalcade of studios that are actually going to take advantage of those IP Embracer Group would be the one I believe wholeheartedly Embracer Group will make another thief. They will make another Deus Ex because those are just the tier of franchises I would associate with them anyway. So perfect for them. Um, but as far as this specific thing with them looking to maybe sell some more things like their European studios and whatnot, I'm not entirely sure what their European studios are. I think is Deck Nine based out of the U.S. Because that's, um, that's the strange folks. That's um, a good question. I, and and as they, a side note, are they in Canada? Oh yeah, they are in Canada. I'm pretty yeah. sure they're in Canada. Yeah, <laughs> cancel that. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna actually look up Square Enix Europe. Westminster, Colorado. They're they're an American studio. Oh wow! Then completely erase everything I just said. Um, but yeah, to see that they're maybe looking to sell more stuff to make themselves even more lean for an acquisition of some sort. Uh, not the happiest, but you know it is what it is. There are there's some more. Uh, there's some more Mont uh not Montreal. What is the word? Eidos. There's some more Eidos stuff over in Europe that they could get rid of. I don't know who has to just cause IP. I think Square Enix still it, has that. It, I well, I'm, I believe they didn't they sell that? Just cause. Well, they sold everything except for like four IPs, and it was Life is Strange, uh Outriders, and like one other thing, which I think might have been just cause. Um but yeah, they I, I, I'm not happy that Square Enix just undervalues these studios to this degree, but I'm hoping that they all find homes to where they will be valued. I'm sure over at Embracer Group, all of those IPs are going to be great for them. Legacy of Kane, they're going to be happy with. Deus Ex, all these things we've all talked about. They're going to do stuff with these IPs. Very, very quickly, um, not to interrupt, sorry. Um, the yeah. Square Enix retains Life is Strange, Outriders, and Just Cause IP um, okay. following the studio. This is over on Neo Seeker never heard of these people but but those are the three that you were probably thinking of um yep. it, it, they are letting go of deus ex legacy of kane thief and tomb raider getting crazy yeah. for 300 million dollars i can't believe they tomb raider alone is worth tomb raider million. alone is worth 300 million dollars i said that yeah. when with the video uh the uh, and i i agree thousand a thousand percent tomb raider by itself maybe even just the movie rights is close to 300 million dollars like I really am fucking flabbergasted that, that this happened, yeah. which is why it, the only justification is that they are being bought by someone else or they are trying to court something to happen. Like maybe Apple or maybe Sony is looking at like the, we've all been saying Sony. And yes, I do think that's that makes the most sense. It does. What but this is another 10 cent thing. What if what if fucking uh, please, God, don't let that happen. But that is not out of the realm of possibility. If you want to see someone who prints money, Tencent will pay whatever they ask. So let's, if a sell must happen, and everyone knows on the show I'm against all sells, but if it has to happen, fucking please God, let Sony buy them. 
I do not yeah. want to see Tencent own Square Enix. Yeah, that's my two cents. I don't want that. <laughs> yeah, but um, they did retrain Life is Strange. Not surprising. And that, that that might be the one Western IP they cared about. I'm honestly shocked that they cared about Just Cause. Um, I'm curious if that was just a just a deal thing, like a specific deal, and they were like, "Oh, cool, we still have it, whatever." Or yeah, if that was intentional or not. Just Cause feels like they're because if you think about it, uh, Life is Strange just had a recent hit, so they're gonna hold on to that. Outriders just had most of a recent hit, so they still see potential in it. I think for Just Cause, they made so many of them so fast that it's a very iterative game. Like It's like a Call of Duty where they feel like, oh, we can make another one of these. So let's hold on to that IP and we'll squeeze the lemon again you know, in a couple of years when people... Because I feel like 4, no one cared about 4 because it's like, all right, didn't 3 just come out? So they're going to make another one. They're going to try and get people excited for it again. Um, but yeah, for, for the rest of these, it's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I just don't know what Square Enix is doing. So, you know, hopefully everything will come together at some point soon so we can all know what's going on. But right now I'm a little mildly concerned and just baffled by a lot of choices they're making, even if it is leading to an acquisition. I want to see what the acquisition is. So let's see what it is. Agreed. There seems to have been a bug if you believe Xbox, but let's go with the original story and then I'll give the update. Leaked images for Elden Ring and Grand Theft Auto being cloud playable and select images ran through the internet. Could mean that they are coming to Game Pass, although Xbox has noted before that non-Game Pass games could come to the cloud service. Now, I believe today, I, I don't remember the date, but I believe today Xbox came out and said this was a bug, that this was an error. Several, ga several games, apparently not just these two, were marked incorrectly as playable on the cloud and on Game Pass. Now, we are in the strange category of do we believe them? Do we believe it was just a bug? I feel like... Yes. Because I I would be shocked if Elder Ring goes to Game Pass. Because I, I really be. think they, uh, they are kind of confident. Like, no, people will buy it. But who yeah, knows? I... And Grand Theft Auto has come to Game Pass before. It's not out of the realm of possibility. I actually thought Grand Theft Auto V would just be on the cloud as an experiment, maybe between Rockstar and um, Microsoft, Microsoft and seeing if they can get it working on Azure servers or something. Uh, so that's what I originally thought. But again, it seems like this all could have been an error and uh, none of this is real, but it's unclear. I'll, I'll say this. I, I've heard that there's rumors that sometime soon they want to make it to where if you just own a game, Game Pass or not, if you own a game, you can play it through Xbox Cloud Gaming. Yeah. Um, if that's the case, maybe that explains why Elden Ring would be in there, why Grand Theft Auto V would be in there again. Um, so that seems more likely to me. Uh, as far as Elden Ring getting on Game Pass, I could see it coming to Game Pass, just not within the year. I agree. <laughs> I think, that's what I'm saying. Like, they, I yeah. think that's a uh, almost like a Grand Theft Auto V situation where, like, yeah, you know, when they're like kind of positive that like everyone who bought it did, they're like, all right, you can have it on Game Pass for like. I think I think Grand Theft Auto was like two months or something like man maybe even less than that and Elden Ring I I would imagine unless they are willing to spend a lot of money, they, they, it would not be long for it to be on I feel Game like Pass. You would get you get like Dark Souls or Sekiro or something on Game Pass before you get Elden Ring. Yeah, then you kind of tee, tee people up to spend the full price on Elden Ring. So yep, we'll see what happens there. We'll have to. Sticking with uh, rumors on Xbox. A YouTuber by the name of Nicholas Lugo seemingly leaks the existence of a white Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. Achievers, if you Google around, you can find this video. He straight up just unboxes a white Elite uh, Series 2 controller. Um, unclear if... I mean, I highly doubt he made it, but it, it looks pretty official. I, I looked over in the video. It looks pretty good. Uh, it's strange. This kind of came out of nowhere. I could not find any other details about this. He, I don't think he got into like how he got it or who he is or anything like that, but he had a f whole white series two controller. I very curious. I, if I had to assume maybe there's maybe they're manufacturing and he took one from a job or something. I don't know, but, hmm. um, not out of the realm possibility that there would be a white one. There was a white series one elite controller, what probably five years ago now a little, little more yeah, than that probably like that. so uh, mm -hmm. i i don't think this is crazy at all they usually release a different color and they slightly fix some things uh in it so i, I wouldn't be shocked if this is real 
yeah, I'm right there with you. I we'll see what happens with it, but it seems totally plausible. <laughs> Let's start the actual show for the week. Brazil's Administrative Council for Economic Defense. Now, everyone's heard this over the week, and I'm sure that gets you titillated, but let's get into the brass tacks of why you've heard this so often, and maybe dispel some some over-exaggerations maybe some headlines have brought. Of course, Microsoft is in the middle of acquiring Activision Blizzard, but must comply with many regulatory commissions to ensure this pro- purchase doesn't, among other things, Create a monopoly on goods in the market, and there's millions of other reasons. That's just kind of the simplest one I can give you. Currently, the Brazilian body is doing a Passover on this acquisition, which is why you've been seeing some pretty inflammatory claims by headlines about the deal in progress. Let's start with the first big claim. Now, I'm starting from the very beginning. This is technically a story from August 2nd, but I wanted to give you a full look at everything, so we kind of have a bigger picture to go on. And of course, as always, stop me when you want to talk about something. Or uh, If you don't, I will finish the full story. Okay. We'll Sony see. was asked by the regulatory body, what are some of the biggest contentions with the purchase going through? Sony answered with one of the main reasons being Call of Duty. No surprise there. According to translations, of course, this is all in like a Portuguese, so I had to go off what other people said about the story. Sony has said Call of Duty is one of the biggest franchises of all time, and no one can replicate what Call of Duty can offer. And gaming studios can't create a title that can rival the series. Then they go off to say COD can influence what console people may buy. And I think the most potent point is a studio won't be able to create an equally popular product as the series has been embedded into the minds of millions of players. I actually fa- very much agree with that. I think um, I think that is a very good point. Even with a studio that could replicate COD, it doesn't matter because it's been there for so long. And I agree. Mm. I Ooh. Kind, of, I kind of agree because here's the thing, Halo's been around just as long. Um, if you want to, it's not about how long it's been around because you can say something like Killzone has been along has been around long as well. But it's not necessarily about how long it's been around. It's about how consistent it is. Call of Duty has been yearly every year since what 2008? No, earlier than that, 2000 like seven. Yeah, seven. Uh, so like you start there and there's been a new one every single year. I think that's the big thing, and that's not because it has some tier of quality that's better than every other game. It's because they've put hundreds of thousands of people in all these studios working on Call of Duty. Half of fucking Activision's developers work on Call of Duty only. So, like, they've been able to make this conveyor belt of just people working on this one thing forever. That's why they're able to keep this up. And so, I I don't think this is a, oh, no, they're they're buying if if anything sony shouldn't be threatened that they have call of duty they should be threatened that they have all of this extreme talent because now hey you got all this extra talent let's let's get some halo infinite going oh you got this extra talent maybe we can i'm not saying this would happen but just an example let's go back to bleeding edge and boot those servers up and get a new season of content or whatever you know all these different games that they could work on so it's about like having too much talent the activision just has way they have a lot of people that they have on the payroll to make these things so regularly, and that's really the threat. I think you hit the nail pretty much on the head with that. I think, um, although, again, this is a... I think this was, like, th- over 30 pages, so that could be in there. Again, this is all Portuguese. I couldn't read. I can only read what people reported on. So maybe that is buried in there somewhere, but I agree. I think, I think the biggest... And I think this is almost almost every acquisition uh ever probably pertains more to the talent rather than what games they're gonna get right it doesn't matter what games that's why some of these figures are so high the reason uh, bungie was so high in part was because they paid extra to make sure people didn't fucking leave like and of course that is common for acquisitions they don't want people to get a payday and be like i'm fucking retiring peace but still that goes to show you that they're not just buying these for call of duty they're buying this because there's and also, they're buying it for King. Let's not uh, uh, mince ourselves yeah. with that. But they're also buying it because, like like you said, aptly, there are hundreds, thousands of people working on these games. And that means they get to use them for, I mean, the use your imagination. It really is. Yeah. Like, anything. They could divvy up the studios back to where they used to be. They can They can remake some old studios that were dissolved. They can 
take out portions and put them into fucking 343 and revitalize Halo. I mean, literally, it, it you could there are endless of possibilities. Um, if slash when this goes through. Um, now let's go to Microsoft's responses. Now, X Microsoft had a response to this, and of course, it was in a 27 page document. This was transcribed by VGC. Quote, only one third party, Sony, presented materially different opinions than the applicants and the other third parties consulted. Sony is isolated in this understanding and curiously even contradicts itself in the response to the letter. Um, end quote. And this is further detailed by VGC. Microsoft goes on to state that Sony doesn't want to see Call of Duty games on Game Pass on day one because, quote, is resentful of having to compete with Microsoft's subscription service. So Sony's public statements on subscription service and in, in response to the SG's letter are clear. Sony doesn't want attractive subscription services to threaten its dominance in the digital distribu distribution market for console games. Microsoft goes on about several standout points, and I think it best summarizes with five reasons Microsoft points to that make Sony's claims wrong. I think these were pretty interesting, so I want to read these here. One, it's not part of Microsoft's strategy to remove content from players. And Call of Duty will stay on PlayStation as a paid title. They have said that in a binding legal statement. Mm -hmm. Data shows that players see subscription services as only one way to pay for games. Sony claims ignores the, quote, dynamic nature, end quote, of subscription services and the fact that Sony has its own, too. There is a redacted information, which that gets me going. I want to know what the it's fuck was in mama, that redacted thing. Yeah. Microsoft was your mama so fast. <laughs> also, <laughs> you a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There, there, there are there are numerous other game distribution channels and subscription service, many of which include content that isn't available on Xbox. Even more interesting but not surprising, Microsoft puts forth the claim that Sony is actively pays to keep games off of Game Pass. Another shocking revelation we made today. Aside from God of Ragnarok pushing other games out of their windows, <laughs> quote, it only reveals once again a fear. You can tell you can see the lawyer like in the in the room. You can tell once again a fear yeah. about an innovative business model that offers high quality content at low cost to gamers, threatening a leadership that has been forged from a device centric and exclusivity focused strategy over the years, end quote. It then claims, quote, Indeed, Microsoft's ability to continue expanding Game Pass has been instructed by Sony's desire to inhibit such growth. Sony pays for, end quote, blocking rights, and end quote, to prevent developers from adding content to Game Pass and other competing subscription services, end quote. The remainder of the response is redacted, so we have no idea what the rest of it says. Huh. This has been all over the games industry this past week. Very inflammatory claims. There was a couple of headlines that were a little misleading. Um, I want to open up with one. Be careful when you take like legal knowledge from because half of these people don't know. So be very careful. Don't just uh, read a headline and be like, oh, that's crazy. Uh, and I always point to when we talk about law because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. You go over to Hoag's Law. He's actually a very interesting character. He runs a law YouTube and he covered a lot of this. And he had some interesting feedback. And what I garnered from both reading all of these passages and listening to his video, this is all up to snuff. They're doing what they're asked by a legal entity. We shouldn't look at it as if one is bashing the other one. We should take this as they are answering a question. Is Call of Duty going to influence people's decisions? Yes. I think that is an easy yes to anyone in the industry. And I think that Sony rightfully points that out in many things. And of course, Microsoft has to say something. So they disregard their claims. They bring up the very apt uh, observation of if you're why are you so afraid of exclusivities? You do that. So I don't know why, why you're bashing us because you do that. And again, these are all just they are abiding by what they were asked. They were asked to response, and this is what they respond. This isn't like some sort of flame war. This isn't a Twitter exchange. These are very highly <laughs> yeah. legal documents. We're probably reading well over hundreds of millions of dollars paid in legal fees to have all this written out. So, like, mm. this is all very expensive, high-end work. Damn it. I talked enough. What are your thoughts on all this? 
And this and it can be anything. What are your thoughts on this entire situation? The reaction via the news outlets? Any really anything? Eh, I'll say yes. I also noticed that some of the headlines were a little bit sensationalized. Uh, it, it's not too surprising that oh they they engage in exclusive content to lock others out. Ooh. Yeah. And, Especially considering clutching my pearls. Entire, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Big surprise. But especially considering Microsoft's whole like idea of existing with Xbox was we want to be a direct competitor to the PlayStation 2 yeah. uh, back when that came out. So makes sense that those are still the main dichotomy they're thinking. Um, it's not a surprise. What I do think is interesting is, you know, it's just interesting that all this has to be said because of this purchase. Like this is just really like Activision and Xbox becoming one is such a big deal that is having such big reverberations around the industry. Uh, so news like this is coming out, which, you know, couldn't say it's news too much, but yeah, it's, it's just interesting that it has gotten this far. I think um, people are bored. Yeah, I, I do honestly it. think that if we had games going on right now, I don't think we'd be talking about, the very minute details of a buyout from a giant corporation. So like, I think it in part, it's, I think a lot of people are fucking bored because they don't have games to play. They have to go to their backlog or they have to, you know, play like some indies and we don't have a lot to talk about. So I think this just filled up the void. And of course you get the most traction and I, you know, I don't necessarily blame these sites, but you get the most traction when you stir up the console war shit, stir it up, yeah. get the bees sure. going and then you let it go and you get all the clicks and shit. Exactly, exactly. I'm sure anyone who has been following the industry for a long time or just has any slight understanding of the business side of things, this isn't too much of a, sur of a surprise to no. people, but to a lot of the YouTube thumbnails, to a lot of the people who are in the replies of every single at Xbox or at PlayStation tweet, that this is going to be red meat for them, but I... It's hard to care too much. <laughs> Agreed. I, I the reason I wanted to cover it so in depth and at the beginning of the show is because so many people were talking about it, and it's clear they. I, I never want to be mean, but it's clear they don't know what they're talking about. So I feel like I have to make sure achievers listening to the show are not taking these people at their word. I will say one thing that's interesting is that. I didn't really think of it in this way, but it makes a lot of sense where PlayStation, they don't necessarily say, hey, we're paying to make it so this game is only on PlayStation. We're paying to make it so that it's not on Xbox. So it directly hurts the competitor rather than only benefits us. Uh, and I think that that makes sense because if you're getting someone to sign an exclusivity agreement, you want to be able to be like, all right, well, you can go to PC since we don't see them as a threat. You yeah. can make your money on Twitch since we don't see them. As yeah, a we don't really care about Switch. We don't really care about PC. Like, you know, do what you exactly. want. Like that makes that makes a lot of sense, but at the same time, it's like it comes off as a little petty when really that's just yeah. how business. Yeah, no, and, so. and it does. I agree. It does come off as what was, uh, and a lot of people. I don't know if you saw this. It was a little funny, but again, it was kind of like eye rolling. But someone put the Modern Warfare Two cover art and then took the quotes from this and put it on the <laughs> thing. So I was like, all right, touche. That was a little funny. Uh, clear, yeah. clearly you're um annoying but you made a funny so good job yeah but uh, yeah was... they they put like a uh uh call of duty like the biggest franchise you know blah blah, blah. so um there, there's a couple things that, like you bring up that yeah you know i i get i get why it comes off as like especially microsoft i mean but they have to they have to talk this way they have to make sure it's clear like you know oh why are you making fun of this i know we know you want this because we threaten your uh, digital distrib uh, distribution market like as being one of the biggest ones so it's a little bit of both it's it's i get it in let's not let's not get a little crazy out there take it yeah take a chill pill for sure for sure this is gonna be a very microsoft slash xbox centric show so strap in for the next few Ooh. stories Microsoft, alongside Unity, one of the most popular engines for making games particularly indie and mobile games and now say partnership to bridge Azure, Microsoft's cloud technology, to Unity to enable a more ease of use for games to be made by cloud technology. An excerpt from the announcement reads, quote, The magic of 3D interactive experiences born in games is quickly moving to non-gaming worlds. Unity is building a platform-agnostic, cloud-native solution that meets the wide-ranging needs of all developers from enterprise 
through citizen creators by giving creators easy access to RT3D st uh, simulation tools and the ability to create digital twins of real world places and objects. Unity is offering creators an easy path to production of RT3D assets, whether for games or non-gaming worlds. To support this evolution, creators require a technical infrastructure that is as dynamic and as innovative as they are. Azure is that solution, built for security and global scalability. Azure already supports some of the world's largest games and is bringing those battle-tested learnings to power RT3D's experiences for all industries. As the need for real-time simulation becomes central to every industry ranging from e-commerce to energy, manufacturing to medical and more, Unity and Microsoft are building the creator cloud that empowers 3D artists to build and run those experiences on Azure. End quote. This announcement reinforces the idea that Microsoft and therefore Xbox want cloud-baked technology to power both gaming, game creation, and beyond. Now, there is a lot, and I read a lot of that, but I think it's all important stuff. What do you think this goes on from? So, of course, we can go with the easy route. They want to start developing cloud-based gaming technologies. I think we're starting to see that with a lot, especially new studios that are currently opening that are saying like, yeah, we're trying to make like something in the cloud that has cloud-based technology that can easily run natively via the cloud, something that you wouldn't necessarily have to download, or you could offset your run times on your console off of the cloud. So you're kind of half playing it, but also the servers on Azure are offloading some of the stress from your consoles. What is your thoughts when you first read this? I was actually surprised. I didn't see a lot of people talking about this. And I, um, I may be crazy I'll, here, but I'll, I think it's I'll, a pretty big deal. I'll tell you why in just a second, why Unity might not be the most popular topic of conversation a little bit. But Ooh. for this story specifically, um, I think this is good. Uh, just in general, uh, making it more accessible for developers to be able to you know, make games where you don't need the beefiest hardware. You can offload some of those processes to the cloud or if you don't have hardware at all you can just like log on from a mobile or not a mobile pc with a virtual machine is what they call it um so you know i think that's great i think the more people who can make games more the more preferences the more i found it the more oh yeah you know what i'm gonna <laughs> say. I, literally as you were reading this i saw the tweet about it and i'm like oh shit um so yeah, that that's always a good thing. More developers means more perspectives in our games, and that's always a good thing. Um, as far as like playing games and like the Crackdown Three type thing, where oh, all the destructions in the cloud, I could take it or leave it. Where that's some cool stuff, but if it's a single, if I don't want the next Red Faction game to be depending on the cloud for destruction, which means it'd be really cool, but at the same time, it's like I know you could do this natively because we saw. Red, Red Faction Gorilla is still very impressive with its destruction. So, like, I don't want to... God forbid you're playing it through a rainstorm and the Wi-Fi goes out and now you... Half your game is fucking crashes. Exactly. So, like, I no one... I don't want that type of scenario to be a thing. So, I, I, I think you could do some cool stuff potentially, but that's not what really excites me. The reason Unity maybe isn't, like, the, the, the baddest girl at the ball right now... <laughs> is because uh this story also came out a uh, little couple hours before we started recording uh unity signs a multi-million dollar contract with the u.s government to help with defense um now it's weird because this is this hasn't been a story for that long but it has been in the aura for a while just because uh unity already put itself out there as being interested in getting into these defense contracts and now they've snagged it now they're literally going to be making technologies for like the CIA and all this stuff. So I'm not a big fan of that. It's very, it feels very weird that the fucking engine that ran the walking dead is fucking doing defense stuff now. Um, so yeah, I just don't love that. Cause whenever they say helping the government defense, that probably means, Oh, that, that drone that killed a child, we made the software for that. Like it, it's always that type of thing. So like, I'm not excited about that part of Unity, but I feel like this is just a case of Unity really, really heavily wanting to expand beyond, oh, we're the independent games engine or we're the mobile games engine. They want to be on the tier of Epic. They want to be on the tier of all these really big engines and stuff because Unreal Engine, they use that in fucking Mandalorian. So like, they want to expand in all ways possible. Not all of those ways are going to be ethic, ethically sound because, hey, welcome to a capitalist society, but 
yeah, I'm just not the biggest fan of that. Of course, all the positive things, you know, making it easier for developers, that's great, like I said, but uh, Unity can chill out a little bit. Maybe they don't need to be the biggest engine in the world. Maybe they can just, like, chill and not, you know, contribute to war crimes. <laughs> To give um, some light on what he's talking about, this is via The Observer. I've not heard of them. The game design company, um, Unity, of course, has signed a multi-million dollar deal with CACI International Incorporated, a technology company that last month was awarded a U.S. Army contract to assist in aerial intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance missions. Through this deal, Unity will help the government design human-machine interfaces, dashboards that connect to human controllers, much like a game, for aerospace simulations. And then uh, this uh, to end it, last year, Unity employees demanded transparency when they found out the government used Unity software to visualize attacked plane runways and train drones to identify weapons. It is unclear if employees were aware of a new contract supporting the military. Unity declined to comment on Bloomberg's story. So this was actually originally on Bloomberg, it seems. Um... Where do I go from this? There's so much I can I can say. So let's start with uh, I'll do I'll I'll copy you. I'll start with what I have on the paper here. I think um, this is clear uh, that we are going to in some way be playing cloud based gaming. I don't particularly understand what that means, just because I'm not I'm just I'm not a huge cloud guy. So it would just be me guessing. As what I assume is what they tried to do in 2013 with Crackdown and things of that nature and what they promised on Xbox One at launch is like they would offset like load onto cloud-based servers and that would help with the like destructibility of Crackdown 3 and things of that nature. So I imagine it's almost similar or maybe we're converting to a solely cloud-based experience with a lot of these games. I remember a couple studios that opened recently. I'm blanking on the names. I apologize, but... They were saying that they're looking into more cloud-based technologies and the first couple games might just be straight-up cloud-based. And Unity backing with Azure in this shows that they're going all in. And I think I agree with you. I think they're clearly trying to be an epic. They're clearly trying to generate more and more business to be maybe a big quote, big guy, quote-unquote, in the industry. Um, and then to end it, because I, I did not know that. I did not know that they were even in... Talks with the U.S. government. I I love your. I always. I'm always a guy that's no war. Period. Do I blame them for taking the deal? I mean, I don't know. Can I say no to multi billion dollars? But I also I blame people when they take money from Tencent. So I would say it would be hypocritical of me to pretend like, you know, why? You know, who would say no to? You know, if it's attacking your ethics, you should always say no to anything. And again, if this bothers you. Like I always bring up with uh, when we talk about uh, Hogwarts Legacy. If that bothers you, yeah. then please don't buy the game. That You should always do that. It is very hard to live ethically. I think you and I know that. I have an iPhone for fucking God's sake. All right. Probably the most unethical device I, I own in my. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> if you forgot, uh, if you uh, for some reason aren't following uh, Emin on Twitter, fuck, first off, how? Second, go follow him. Third, uh, you said a track. Yeah. Was it a tractor that you ran? I forget uh, what it was. Pallet, 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 pallet tax. My bag slid under without me noticing. And then so here I am. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that, buddy. Yeah. Um, After this, I will be calling insurance to see if I can get a new one. But anyway, I'm sure. I'm sure they'll help you out with something. Um. Uh, aside from that, though, yeah. Ethically, of course, always, always vote with your wallets where you can. It's hard, right? I have a Series X and a PS5. Both of those were made in China probably using close to slave labor my phone very much was using slave labor so it's hard to justify things but also then buy things so i understand uh, most people's uh, dilemmas especially with unity where it's like yeah they make you know they make military things i can only i can only take so many stances so i i can't really care about this but um i find the uh full military thing i don't i don't blame people for not liking it i can't find myself to care because it's like I find myself caring when it said reconnaissance devices because that just sounds like a fancy way of saying drones loaded with weapons. And I'm like, every time I see drones, I re I remember the thousands of articles I've read of multiple people casualties dying because they wanted to yeah. kill a guy in a in a room. Like it, it, so, yeah. I find I find that troubling as well. Um, we'll yeah. be going back into war later on in this story, 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Ooh, get I get did prepped. not know where that sentence was gonna end. I was like, later on, when <laughs> we'll be what? we'll be talking more about war now? very soon. Um, oh, so Lord. strap in for that. But uh, to put a bow on it, uh, always use your, always uh, vote with your wallet when you can. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. If you can, and of, course, and of course, if you can. Yes, indeed. To uh, this is a quick one. Xbox announced it will be testing a family pan for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate in Ireland and Colombia. It will enable you to add up to four people into a plan. To participate, you need to be in one of the regions listed previously, and you have to be an Xbox Insider. Um, they would not make a big deal of this if this was not coming. They're testing the feature to make sure nothing crazy happens. So I think within the next three months, we will be getting a family plan. Uh, it might be a little later. Who knows? But we are getting this. So get ready. Hell yeah. Microsoft re- um, released additional memory on their Xbox Series S for game developers to utilize when making their games. This will allow for, quote, more control over memory, which can improve graphics performance on memory constrained conditions, end quote. Nothing uncommon there. This is pretty common with with uh, th- what they do is they'll lock some of the memory. So, like, it stays relevant throughout the few years. So, like, every year may- they might release a little bit more memory, a little bit more memory. I think this was news because it happened so quickly i think it, it happened relatively quickly and they had to actually make a statement like hey to help with porting because they probably are having a little bit of an issue we're gonna bring out some more memories so you know maybe keep trying on that series s port don't don't leave yet <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i've had if you ever try to play something like metro exodus on series s it is significantly worse <laughs> wow really i've i've always That's wanted to have movie. one but i can never justify it so i'll, I'll probably never actually have one I, I, at that point i'm like yeah. I'm, i'll just buy a series s like why would i Get a streaming stick, especially when you can play all your games you own on streaming soon. Like, just get a stick. Yeah, that's a good point, too. Where Xbox will be at Games Kong on the show floor, featuring a few games from their first party, like Pentiment, Age of Empires 4, and more. Also, some third parties like A Plague Tale Requiem, Disney Dreamlight Valley, Gunfire Reborn, and much more. There's also going to be a return of Xbox Fan Fest at the show floor. Check out more information over on the Xbox Wire. That was a quick one. Doesn't seem like they're going to do anything um big in terms of conferences or anything um if we remember i believe last year we had that terrible gameplay in quotes conference from xbox i remember that was last year and that and Uh, i imagine maybe that would scare them away because they probably have even less to work with now so i imagine they were like we're just gonna go (laughs) and as a reminder we covered it last week playstation will not be at gamescom um when i was uh, looking through the third party uh Games Emmett. I saw a game called Lies of P. Did you see this game? I think I have. So I it's heavily inspired it. by Bloodborne. Yeah, it's like Pinocchio Bloodborne, right? Yes, I believe so. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. It looks kind of cool. Yeah, it does. It looks exactly like the I talk about my B tier games that I like. This this it gives THQ Nordic energy, <laughs> is what I'll say. Uh it's not a game from them, but it definitely gives that vibe. Um, I'm trying to see because I want to say gameplay came out for it recently, but I'm having. I think like a, I think a, yeah, I see it on their um official website. Uh, it's an alpha gameplay teaser, so it's about no, it's two minutes, so it's pretty hefty. Um, go to the website achievers if you want to check it out. It looks sick. I mean, it really does look cool. Um, the visuals look really nice. Um, and it. I mean, it looks like Bloodborne. I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> like, it looks like Bloodborne, but in a very um, artistic steampunk way. And it looks, it st- looks fucking it, awesome. It reminds me of the people who made The Surge made a Bloodborne. It's like that type of thing. Oh. That's what the vibe gives me. It's Whoa. not the same developer, but it gives me that vibe. Yeah, this yeah, looks like, like Please go look like at this. The, if, you, if anything we just said sounds cool, go check this out. Hell yeah. All right. All right, now, this is another longish one. Take Two conducted an earnings call and something was brought to light. Mainly the lack of information was uh, brought something up. Marvel's Midnight Sun, that is being built by Fire Axis, has been delayed for unknown reasons to fiscal year 2023. But even more surprisingly, albeit slightly exciting, depending on what system you're on, the last gen ports may have been delayed indefinitely. In the same document detailing the new dates for the current gen ports, the PS4, Xbox One, and Switch versions show as... TBA. This delay could signify many things. Is the game in trouble? Does it need more polish? Do they need something else done entirely? Who knows? Before I get into the next thing, because it's completely off topic, 
What are your thoughts when you read this? I know uh, this is almost serendipitous because last week I had Ro on from uh, PXN Podcast. And he actually brought up what my thoughts were because I was actually talking about Slay the Spire. And he was curious if I was excited for Midnight Suns. And I was I went to say no, but then I was like, well, if it has Slay the Spire-esque technology. Um, yeah, like the combats, the cards. If it's stuff. similar, then I'm, I have to admit, yeah, I'll be into that. But what I saw, it didn't seem like that. It seems like you build a deck and then you go in and that doesn't sound fun. But now who knows what we're going to get. Um, I saw your your tweet about it, but I, uh, uh, I also wanted to ask you, what, what were your thoughts when you saw this delay? Um, when I saw this delay, I because I feel like when it first got announced, everyone saw it was card based combat because I think people were expecting this developer with Marvel is literally going to be one to one. It's XCOM, but Marvel. Yeah, I think that's what a lot of people. I think expected. I think yeah, I think a lot of people did yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then here they come with these cards, and everybody's like, "What the fuck?" So I think from then on, the developer was like, "Hey, we need to." Or Firaxis, they were like, "Yo, let's let's chill, let's rethink this entire combat system or whatever, and make it less card based, if not taking the cards out entirely." Um, but people are telling me that. Well, well, from what I've been hearing around a m- rumor mill or whatever, or just people on Twitter or whatever, that's a very big change for just a couple month delay. <laughs> so they probably aren't going to be going that much of an overhaul with I it. I agree. Maybe they're, too, maybe they're making the tutorial more clear, or maybe they're making it less complex for people uh, to be able to understand. So yeah, you hit the nail. Uh, really quick, I think there might be making like a light car base mode or something. Like it, there'll still be car base, but like it'll be like very like minor like maybe it'll be like less cards or maybe it'll be easier or something i don't know but if they are trying to remake the combat we might that could be a whole year by itself who knows Mm -hmm. yes i i don't think they can do that especially when you already have like all the characters and the structure of the game is all set you can't just go under it and slice the combat up and put it back together again so um i don't think that's what they're doing i will say i am interested in this game uh, I don't want to go so far as to say excited because this is the type of game where if it's on like a Game Pass or a PlayStation Plus Extra or whatever, I will be playing this. I will be trying it out. I will definitely see what's up with it. Nothing about this screams I need to spend my 60 or $70 on it right now because even with the XCOM games, I, I like the XCOM games fine enough. I played like 40% into Enemy Unknown and then stopped. I haven't touched the second one. And I haven't touched the DLC that they put out for the first one either. So, like, I like those games fine enough. But even if you add Marvel into it, I'm still not going to be inclined to be excited about that type of game. But if it's fun, and I've already talked about Slay the Spire a bunch, I like card-based combat now, apparently. So I think I could get into this one. Uh, I just got to see more of it. And hopefully it lands, it sticks to landing. They got Blade. They got Spider-Man. What else could you want? <laughs> Agreed. Uh, yeah, I, I, Marvel got me interested into the game, and then when I saw the car-based combat, I went, okay, that doesn't sound cool. I want to cut stuff up as Wolverine. I don't want to, like, play a cut card. But, <laughs> like I said, if it's anywhere near the, the gameplay experience of Slay the Spire in a satisfying way as that, I'm down. But again, it seems like you're, like, curating a deck or something, so I'm like, that doesn't sound as fun as, like, dynamically building a deck while you're playing. But who knows? I was also intrigued that they have like a I don't know how in depth it was, but like they had like the relationship side thing oh, where like you can like develop relationship like with some Mass Effect light. Yeah. 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 So you like you go and talk to Doctor Strange and like you'll get combat bonuses and things if you're like friends with them and stuff. So. I I don't have too much else to add. We we've been talking about this for a while. I was actually hoping it would just come out. So it's over, but we'll have to yeah. wait longer. <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed. Not too long. Strangely, I haven't seen uh, many people talk about this one as well. But an interesting observation was made by Strass Selnick, CEO of Take-Two Interactive Software. When talking to Fortune about the possibility of a recession, he said, quote, What we're seeing now is some slowness that we believe is driven by the overall economy. And while the experts uh, argue about what is and isn't a recession, from my point of view of a consumer-facing company like Take-Two, we're already in a recession. What has gone on of late in the markets reflects what I said early in the uh, pandemic, which was that we are we were seeing enhanced demand with people sheltered at home, and we expected the post-pandemic demand would be lower than the pandemic demand, but higher than the pre-pandemic demand. And I think that was proven to be the case. 
However, we, what we're seeing now is some slowness that we believe is driven by the overall economy. End quote. He finishes with this, quote, I don't know how long it will last. I think by the end of 2023, we'll be in fine shape as an industry and as an overall economy, of course. I can't call what will happen between, between now and the end of 2033, but I'm pretty confident that we'll be back to normal by then. End quote. Hmm. It was your, so I don't know if you saw this. It was very, like, haphazard. It was just made. And um, it wasn't very much of a big deal. But I wanted to bring this up only because everyone's been debating are we in a session, blah, blah, blah. It, that's not necessarily important right now, but do you think that this uh, observation from the Take-Two CEO is true, that we are seeing, like, this pandemic drop, which I think is pretty certain to happen, but are we seeing a overall gaming downward spiral on top of the post-pandemic, uh, the pandemic levels going down, but also the economy as well? Um, I think you're going to be seeing that due to the economy. Yes, because like like they were saying, inflation's going up, even though the the pandemic is people are con- deciding that the pandemic's ending, even though it looks like we're about to have another one on top of that. So, yeah, um, but yeah, that that is definitely a factor where sales are slowing because of inflation. Sales are slowing because of, you know, pandemic, but also sales are slowing because people can't buy the consoles that are popular right now. Like even PlayStation in their meeting or their financial thing, they they're no longer giving uh, updated results for PS4 sales. Like it's in the rearview mirror for them. So like you, they're already moving on in the companies, but a lot of people still only have PS4s. Like it's very hard to buy these consoles. So I think you're going to be in a little bit of a slump until that straightened out. Uh, I think you're going to be a little bit in a slump until like the big big games come out like elden ring was probably i would say elden ring is the first like big boy release of the generation and that was at the beginning of this year um we have god of war coming that's going to be another landmark gta 6 at some point which at this point i wouldn't be surprised if it was just gta 5 too like (laughs) um but yeah they we got a lot of those coming we we just haven't had too many big major landmark games come out that were specific to the PS5 Xbox series generation. So um, that's really what I think it is. I don't think it's a downward spiral. I think it's it's less of a line going down and more of a line going flat right now. Um, but I think it's just going to either shoot back up or just stay consistent uh, in the near future. In the near future, it's going to stay consistent. But in the far out future, once we get the God of Wars and the GTAs coming out, that line will shoot back up. I, I, that much I'm confident in. I think I agree, too. I think we will see a slow slump. Now, it depends on if we are really going into a long-term uh, recession or not. Um, recessions uh, uh, can be quick. It can be long. We can be in a long recession, like something like we were coming out of in like 2008 or something, or we could have a slow period and then a huge jump back into what we would call normalcy, and you know, uh, with air quotes with that. Uh, I, I think we're heading I, into something more serious, to be honest. But that might be a different topic. <laughs> <laughs> the, like, the, there's so there's so much to 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 speculate when you bring up the economy could influence things. Where it's like, fuck. I mean, we could go a million different ways with that. So to just put a ring on it, I do. Th- I think we're going to have a very interesting year in terms of gaming sales, not only because of the pandemic, but also how many games are coming out. And like you said, Elden Ring was kind of the big pop, and it looks like hopefully God of War Ragnarok is. We'll have to see when that comes out. Um, but that seems to be it. It doesn't seem like we got huge things. Of course, we'll have Call of Duty that, that kind of spikes sales again too. But we might we might see a very very low year in both in terms of an overall economy and especially in the gaming let's see as a whole. Certainly, certainly. Back to war. <laughs> PC Gamer reports a Russian streamer known by two names, and again, I apologize. This is, I believe, Russian names. I will butcher this. I will try, though. Nevazno, Kut, and Velichashi. Velichashi? Velichashi. Leaks, <laughs> leaks the existence of a console port of Stalker, a PC game that debuted in 2007 and is getting a sequel sometime in 2023. The streamer released the footage of the game running and a five-page document detailing uh, he leaked the footage because GSC Game World 
has discriminated against Russian fans by encouraging them to donate to Ukraine's Come Back Alive Foundation that funds defensive equipment to the Ukrainian armed forces. It is worthy to note donating to Ukraine is a crime in Russia. Nizanho's main issue with all this seemingly, according to him, is that GSC did not make any Russian supporters aware of the potential consequences of donating to the fund. When asked about this by PC Gamer GS, he said, quote, We have been publishing pleas to help Ukraine in our social media and our web resources, just like thousands of other Ukrainian companies. Nonetheless, an important thing to mention is that we also added clarification about the donation from Russia later on. We think we might be in the absolute minority, if not the only ones, to do so. End quote. Nizanho? Nizanho ended with, quote, I hope that everything ends with this. It doesn't matter how I got it. What's important is I didn't lie, and this is not some fan mod. This leak was made out of a desire to achieve justice, which I saw in revenge by any means at all. This was a cry from the soul, end quote. Very Russian at the end there. Very Russian at the end. That is that is how they talk. Um, This is loaded, my friend. How would you like to defuse the political bomb that we uh, are currently facing here? I will start us off, um, and I will cut the blue and red wire. So, <laughs> this is a situation of, uh, first off, very interesting that this guy just straight up was like, fuck you. And apparently what he said was he got this from an employee that was also upset that they were donating to Ukraine, uh, to the defense fund, that he might have been Russian or something. Unclear how he got it. Unclear if he's being 100% honest. Maybe he is. Maybe he's being truth. Lucky. It is it is strange that how do I want to put this? It is strange that they are making the donations to the fund, but it is technically a crime in Russia, and they didn't disclose that. So I do understand his frustration. Now, do I understand that he like somehow got a footage from the game and leaked it, and then like had this manifesto situation that like told him how upset he was i don't know if i can agree with you on that it seems like a little overboard of the situation but russian and ukrainian tensions obviously high high highly tensed of course with the russian evasion of ukraine so i understand from his point of view that he got pretty pissed when he saw this don't think it was uh very called for for him to do any of this but i digress i don't want to beat up this guy too bad because i'm sure given uh Rose versals, I would be upset too. Although I highly doubt I would do any of this shit. <laughs> I would just be like, "Oh, yeah, that sucks." Oh well. <laughs> like, but yeah, I try to. I'm trying to give him a better without because he's a Russian person. Of, I'm there's so much propaganda. The word God knows what this man yeah. believes. So he could mean well, uh, but uh, it does. I, I do feel bad though that like. It seems like they tried very well to be like, first off, these were based in Ukraine. So I don't know what I don't know what you thought stance they would take. What did you yeah. think their stance would have been? Did you think I'm they would have been cool? my homeland? Like, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to I'm going to fund Russia. I don't I don't know, but they should have disclosed it. It's apparently no one does. I mean, that's what GSC said. I mean, he's like, we're one of the Obviously. only people that did disclose that it is a crime. So, like, don't blame yeah. us. Um, I think there's millions of ways you can take this. Uh, I I feel bad for both GSC and this gentleman. God knows uh, what he may believe. I feel like uh, given role reversals, I probably would be right there with him. But I hope that I hope that he feels some s- sort of satisfaction so he doesn't do this again. I don't know. This is such a <laughs> fucking weird situation with like this is the way you get back. I don't know. I, I maybe you could have just emailed him and then gone on with your life. I don't know. I'll say this, because this is a story. I've only heard half of this story. I heard about the link of a console port of Stalker, which for me got me excited because Stalker is one of those games where it, it's notoriously janky, but it did a lot of interesting things. And that's always like the most interesting type of game for me. So right. I've always been interested. I don't know if I wanted to play it, but I definitely wanted to know more about it. So it, being able to play it on a console potentially, that's exciting. I don't know if that's actually going to come out at some point, but also if unclear it, if it was uh, real. It does look real, but it's on I I mean, we're going off oh, of at this point, I'm sure that it's real. I'm just more thinking 
is this actually something they were working on with the intent to release? Mm. Or is this something that, oh, we were working on it in 2009 and it fell through or something? Because, like, it's been a long time since the last Stalker game. Like, what, Clear Sky, I think, might have been the last one? Or no, that's the first one. Uh, Shadow of Chernobyl and Clear Sky are the two. But <laughs> one of them came out more recently than the other. And that was, like, maybe 10 years ago. <laughs> maybe, like, eight or nine years ago. But in any case, um, it's been a long time since they put out another Stalker game. So this console port might have been something that just got worked on and then fell through during that time. So that in and of itself is very interesting to me. A console port of that game could work for me. Um, but the thing that we, throughout this pandemic and a lot of things that have happened during this pandemic, you know, take your summer of 2022 or take your January of 2021. We have been thinking a lot about how the countries we are in give us ways to believe the world is. <laughs> we that has been a topic of thought for me at least, but I feel like that's a lot of people at least in America. We've been thinking a lot about like, all right, how how has the the standards of this country made me make certain assumptions in my mind about how things are supposed to be? Um, that is not a line of thinking that every country has gone through. I think the pandemic kind of made a lot of inequalities very obvious in this country and a lot of countries around the world, but not every country has the luxury has the luxury of having that information available to them. I know in Russia specifically, um, a lot of their media is state sponsored. A lot of just everything they do has to be approved by some higher management. So you're not going to get contracting contrasting opinions, contract contrasting viewpoints other than what the state wants so i can't blame this gentleman for not having the critical thinking skills to think oh they're based in ukraine of course they're going to want me to donate to ukraine oh wait russia wants to destroy ukraine or wants to destroy the citizens so they can get the land back then of course they are going to make it illegal for you to donate to that campaign the thing that i'm a little weirded out about if you if you're a fan of this developer and you understand they're from ukraine are you can't I find it bullshit if he's upset that Russia made it illegal to donate to Ukraine. If you're upset about that, that's a Russia problem and not the Ukrainian developers problem. That's something that you get mad at the state about. And I understand that, hey, well, it feels futile to be mad at the state because what can you do as an individual? Like we feel that over here. Trust me. But at the same time, I'm like, so you're going to like you're going to like leak their game. And it's not just, oh, I tweeted something rash and didn't think about it. You had for several hours or days hold on to that anger to such a point where you want to do all of this and then make a whole video and stream about it and like email back and forth with this other developer. Like this is a long drawn out thing for that one feeling. And it's it's impressive. Like when people like this is the same thing with like harassment campaigns and stuff where like you were mad long enough to look up their address or something yeah. or to send the thing to a developer is that type of energy. So I understand that because of the state you're in and the way that you've been raised, this character might not have had the critical thinking skills to think through this in a more rational way, but it's just impressive that it got to this point where at no point did he think I should be mad at the state because he lives in an environment where that is either not possible or is futile. So, yeah, it's it's just interesting to see how, quote unquote, the other half lives like people in other countries have to deal with a different country and different standards of thought. So to me, I see this and I'm like, bro, you could have stopped A, B, C, D on this train station ride before you got off at that final exit. But I, looking at it from his perspective, like you said, um, God knows what he's been told. Like, uh, that's why I try I, to like. If I remember correctly, they first off, I don't think anyone in Russia knew about the invasion. And then second, that's uh, true. Yeah, and then second, I believe they uh, they've started off. Who God knows, I have no idea what they even know now. Um, but I believe they 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 were they think that they're rec they're saving Ukraine because they've been taken over by Nazis. Like like there's like yes. it's like levels deep. So it's like. He might they think have he might think there's Nazis there. I uh, who knows. So that's why I don't want to necessarily jump on this individual. But 
I do think you said something very wise, whereas he didn't for one second go, why is it illegal to donate to Ukraine? He went, oh, it's your fault for not telling us that it was illegal. You know, like, it was very interesting. It seemed almost like he was trying to maybe be upset or something. I don't know. And I'm I, the I, individual, not the system. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this was this was an interest. And like you said, this was an interesting look through the mirror and something that we have it hard to believe. Our system's pretty fucked, too. Um, I love America, but I, I have lots of problems with it. But we aren't Russia or China, so I will give us the benefit of the doubt in in some areas because at least I can get on the internet, and the yeah. they can't really. So, um, exactly. I do hope. Uh, I do hope he. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't do anything crazy because if that last sentence was very strange, but again, Russia. That's how Russians talk, though. Like that's that is that's kind of normal. I hope this man could find peace without taking any from others. Very wise. Yeah, that's all I got for him. Rough stuff. <laughs> Evo <laughs> <laughs> happened recently, <laughs> which is oh, one of my boy. favorite events of the year. And IGN talked to CEO of Arc System Works. Oh, this is like make fun of Elijah days in it. Minoru <laughs> Kaduka. 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 And the. And their IP collaborations were brought up. Kaduka admitted that in the past they have been very picky with whom they collaborate with. The biggest recently, of course, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. But aside from that, their games have remained relatively niche. But it's something uh, he wants to change. "Quote: We need to expand finding communities through IP. In the future, if we have such an opportunity, we're actively uh, pushing to collaborate with new IP owners." And he ends with, "I have a plan." End quote. <laughs> so it's very, very like, "Oh, okay, you have a plan." Right, Kevin Feige. Let's go. <laughs> I have a plan. Puts on a little, little, little Evo hat. <laughs> Sticking with Evo, uh, and stop me whenever you want me to uh, cover something. Sticking with Evo after Tekken Seven Grand uh, Finals, Bandai Namco, very uh, cool by the way, shared a trailer for Tekken Seven update. But at the end of the trailer, it shows Kazuya Mishami throwing Hiachi Mishami off of a cliff. Very hilariously, by the way, he picks him up like a, like like a like someone would pick someone up out outside of a fire, and he just walks to a cliff and slowly drops them off. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and uh, uh, the camera zooms in. It's a very PS one uh version of the character. I assume that was maybe a cutscene from the PS one. I don't know. I didn't play the game. Um, but then quickly transforms to a very modern, a very clean looking version of that character. And then all it says is get ready on the screen. Very cool announcement. I did like it. And they didn't say anything about it. Uh, even in the tweet, they go, uh, enjoy our latest update of the game. And and it and at around minute 40 of that, uh, it's it goes to this and then it just ends with like get ready. And I was like, oh, cool. So that's probably hinting at Tekken 8, uh, which I'm sure many fighting games were very excited. And then another announcement, SNK revealed that there is a Fatal Fury game in development. The series started in 1991, and this game will be the first new game in the series since 1999. I believe there's a wow. teaser out for it, so go check it out. So, Evo happens. I love Evo. I have so much fun uh, watching. It's, it's, it's like anything. It's like any with any tournament. It's fun watching high-skilled, really anything to me. And I loved watching. I'm right now watching the Mortal Kombat 11 one. So entertaining. I'm about halfway through that. So I don't know who wins quite yet, but I'm loving it. I, I every time Evo comes on, I make time to try and watch at least the grand finals of everything. Um, usually it's at least Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, of course. Uh, interesting enough, uh, Smash was not here this year. Um, interesting. Uh, hmm. Of course, maybe something to do with PlayStation buying Evo. Wouldn't be shocked. Uh, about that probably has more to do with nintendo being like ah we want smash and only we want to have all of our hands all over smash we don't want any fans doing shit that we can't maybe i i think i think nintendo was like oh play it's playstations we're not going like i think it was just very much like oh it's yours we don't care if you want us there we're not going or something you know something very i I found it interesting though it's like "Mm, evo's an event though smash should be there but eh, i digress we got playstation all-stars it's fine (laughs) Anyways, um, 
Oh, and uh, I'm sorry, I forgot one thing. Robot Netcode is coming to Dragon Ball Z Fighters this marks day 864 of me pretending to know what Rollback Netcode is. Um, Do you actually not know what it is? No, fuck no, I don't know what that is. All right. My slight, very quick understanding is that it is like a slightly predictive type of thing where it's trying to predict the next move you're going to make. So oh. That it can have even less latency when you hit that button. Oh, okay. I've heard this described. I did not know that's what rollback netcode was. Yes. Okay. It's something similar to that. It's that type of technology. So it's so it's minimizing latency as much as possible. Exactly. Oh. Where it's not waiting for a response all the time. It's kind of like it's like pre-firing around a corner in a shooting. It's like it's um. Like I think that's how uh, cloud gaming for Game Pass was first described. It or maybe it was Stadia. It tries to predict where you're gonna go. Maybe it was Stadia that did that. I think it actually was Stadia. Like they preload like where they think you're gonna go, and then they'll show you that when you're starting to go there to help with like load times or something. I'm almost yeah. positive it was Stadia, but there was something like that. So that's interesting that that's kind of similar to to what to what they're doing. Um, but uh, uh, I I don't know. Do, do you watch Evo? Do you have any passing interest in Evo, or does any of these announcements uh get you excited? Uh, Evo, much like Games Done Quick, it's an event that I am so glad happens for the culture, but I don't necessarily keep up with it too much myself. Okay. Um, I love watching fighting games. I don't do so too much, um, and I don't play too many of them. But I will say in the case of like Arc System Works wanting to work with new IP, that's very exciting. Uh, yes. Because Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Fighter Z is a game that I am utterly impressed by. I think it looks beautiful. Looks like it plays great, too. That is, I do not care about Dragon Ball, so that's just not for me. Yeah. But if you get you get the right IP in that type of art style, that type of vibe, you might get me in the door with something. He said um, um he was aiming for more Western appeal. Don't know what that means. That really could mean anything. Um, it could mean PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale too. Who knows? But uh, no. If no. you want to see me cry on camera, <laughs> I would. I would fund that game if I was like a millionaire. I would go to him and be like, we're going to make PlayStation All-Stars. How much money do I have to give to two parties so I can film Emmett Watkins Jr.'s reaction to Arc System Works and then PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale to you over? Had, I've had dreams of being on stage at E3 getting to announce this game. And I totally have like a fucking Yarny from Unraveled guy moment on stage where I'm like, just like, no, not even that obscure reference bet awards like 2008 chris brown did a whole it was the year michael jackson died so whenever that was oh god i loved that i know exactly holy shit yes and it was like an amazing tribute and he nailed everything and then he had to do fucking what was it man in the mirror at the end and in the mirror was not crying he was so good though (laughs) everyone i was was. like i was about to say like i have no idea what you're about to say i remember (laughs) i remember that so vividly in my head holy you like knocked a memory like loose holy yeah. shit because i remember Shout i watched that. it because michael jackson passed away recently and i heard they were going to do an homage and i was like well i have to watch it dude that it was so fucking good but then he started crying i was like holy shit like this is such a big deal i was so young though i i loved them i liked michael jackson like as a kid so but i you know death was still like unknown to me so it was like weirdly emotional for me as a kid too so yeah, yeah, I, I, I feel, I feel yeah. you with that. Holy shit! I, I was about to say like, I don't know what the fuck you're about to say, but then I was like, holy <laughs> shit! I watched that. I remember that yep. so well. There we go. Cultural touchstones, everybody. But yeah, long story short, if they ever announce PlayStation All Stars and I have to be on stage to announce it in some way, that's gonna be me. I won't get through it. I'll just be <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I, that was such a weirdest thing. I remember that was on like Epic Fail on Attack of the Show the next day because he couldn't get through the song, and I was like, I watched that live. That was emotional. Fuck you. <laughs> but I like Attack of the Show. They're back anyway, so it is what it is. Anyway, yeah, that's that's what I feel about Evo. <laughs> oh, that's right. We were talking about Evo. <laughs> um yeah no i i don't have anything else to add it's always cool always a fun event and uh, like you said games done quick i love i love when we do these things it's so fun we all kind of not we don't all but we all kind of get together a little bit um and it does feel a little bit more like a community whereas a lot of times it doesn't for various reasons but um it does feel like that when summer games uh sorry uh games done quick or summer games done quick or stuff like this happens because we all kind of like share in this kind of fun thing that happens 
Exactly. We like the spectacle. Embark Studios had to delay their release of Arc, Ra Arc Raiders to next year, but pulled the curtain back behind their studio to show some of the reasons why. In a rare move in the industry, in a fully transparent talk, um, uh, uh, Patrick Sutherland, uh, the CEO, discusses um, that their first-person game, Project Discovery, was coming along so well that they may be able to have two releases in the same year. Patrick Sutherland goes on to say this, of course, is a big deal for studios of their size, even more so that the FPS project will be their first game to market ahead of Arc Raiders now. So now their FPS will come before the other game. He ended oh. with expect to see some testing for Arc Raiders soon, as well as a PvP mode being added to Arc Raiders. You will no doubt remember Patrick Sutherland previously as executive vice president in charge of Worldwide Studios at EA from 2011 to 2018, leaving in 2018 to found and become the CEO of Embark Studios. We have yet to see full gameplay of Arc Raiders. It was only just a small tidbit from, I believe, Summer Games Fest. And only mm -hmm. a small teaser of Project Discovery uh, was being shown, I believe, on their uh, Twitter. So go check that out. Um, so much is up in the air about these projects. We don't know too, too much. Did you know uh, anything about these? Uh, yeah, Arc Raiders, I remember seeing that at uh, one of the Jeff Keighley things. Yeah. Uh, Project Discovery is completely new to me. I haven't even seen the teaser they're talking about. So, you know, whatever that is. I, I will say I remember seeing Arc Raiders that looked interesting because uh, it looked like it had the exact same art style as like the Battlefront rebooted games. Um, and so that's just very pretty, very, you know, it, it looks like a nice product. I, I'm very hesitant when I see these studios from like, oh, I used to lead EA. Like you can tell the difference between a studio full of creatives and people full of like product people. Yeah. Uh, the, Embark Studios gives me the vibes of like, because I don't know anything about Arc Raiders, I don't know anything about Project Discovery, but on paper they just sound like, oh, this is going to be a great monetization thing. This is going to be a great, like, it's going to be a great product rather than a great piece of art. And that has its place. I enjoy a lot of these multiplayer games, as we've talked about before, but I don't love that an EA executive, especially he was over there during the years where I think EA got the biggest flack for doing weird things. That's when they killed Mirror's Edge. That's when they ran Dead Space into the ground. That's when they shut down Pandemic. Like, well, I wish they shut down Pandemic now. But um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's it's it's kind of iffy there. But, you know, I'm I'm going to see what these games are about at the very least. You know, it's more than just him at the studio. I'll at least give it a little bit of a shot, give it a little bit of my eye and interest, but I'm not holding my breath for either of these. I kind of agree with you. So I think we always need a balance of creatives and executives, right? If you have everything run by creatives, you know, That'd you don't have fun. someone <laughs> usually keeping with the schedule. Uh, they won't, you know, they sometimes disregard funding. There could be millions of different things, but also the other extreme is nothing but executives and constantly thinking about what are the ways we can make money is also something you don't want in a studio. And you want the marriage of two. You, you want a perfect balance of the creatives are happy and the executives are happy. The creatives are happy because they got their ID out there and the executives because they got the money that they needed to keep everything running. I think we can all agree most creative people would like live out of their van if they, <laughs> because they just want their ideas out there. Um, so they probably wouldn't uh, set the uh, best foot forward in terms of money. When I see this, it's just unproven. So I just don't even, I don't really get excited anymore. I, I think I used to. I think I used to get excited about new studios and new stuff. I, I still get excited about new studios because it's new talent. I can go uh, towards making new games. But when I hear free to play and all these buzzwords, I go, I don't really care too much anymore. Now I kind of hit the stance of like, all right, you kind of have to prove to me now. Rather than just me being excited, I will say the art style, although we have not seen much of it, Arc Raiders looks very sa uh, satisfying. I do like the kind of neon 1980s Atari-esque aesthetic coloring that was going on in the kind of like the case that I'm like picturing in my head that they showed off. So I, I get slightly excited, but you do bring up 2011 and 2018 EA was not the best uh, in terms of really anything. They were making some good games, but... That was Star Wars Battlefront 2 territory. <laughs> and he had to have greenlit that. So, yeah. oh, so God, that he was executive of Worldwide Studios. That means he touched everything. And also, I think he used to run DICE as well. 
So he signed off on on a lot of things that I think we would look on paper and be like, "What the fuck were you doing, bro?" Yeah, he pro- he's probably there when Dice got set on the current path of like put out a battlefield game, it's bad a year later. Oh, we added a bunch of stuff, it's good again. And kind it's of. a cycle they've repeated three to four times now. <laughs> yeah, I still I'm I still don't understand what happened with the latest battlefield. I I I really don't I get it. Like there, why I was it released say- like not like clearly not fully done like what's going on over there it's dice like dice used to be the studio for fps gaming like them and infinity ward and that and like that's the two people you looked towards for giant inspiration of of the sps genre and now I, it, dice is like in a bioware situation where like now you kind of have to make prove to me that you're still worthy of the name because like you guys used to kill I'll say two things. I think I got this from Tom Henderson's video, which is on his YouTube channel. You know, leaker Tom Henderson, he makes a lot of, you know, big discoveries in games. He made a whole video explaining what happened with Battlefield 2042. And one of the big things that I think is most pertinent is that for each of these dice games, top talent would leave to go do other stuff. You know, because imagine every game you make is bad when it first comes out and you get a lot of backlash and it's not good until years later and by that point the big chunk of the player base has already moved on to the next thing so they move on to a different game but they're not hiring as much new talent to replace those old seats so you're kind of giving junior talent a chance before they really have a chance to like prove themselves and then you're expecting them to nail all the things that worked in the last game but a lot of people worked in the last game aren't working there anymore so it's kind of starting from scratch a bunch and it's just a whole cycle that's just not quite healthy um but seems very similar to 343 not fully but kind of similar to just couldn't keep talent yeah that's how it is and hopefully with embark studios they i don't think they're gonna fall into that because it's their first game literally like i'm pretty sure a lot of people who started with that studio are going to be there when this game ships yeah um but we'll see what happens is arc raiders gonna be a one and done we're playing this for a couple years and that's it or is this gonna be your apex your Fortnite? it's gonna be here for a decade we'll see um i i just don't know they definitely wanted to be here for a decade for the sound of it but you know fingers crossed on it very quickly because we're running long and i am it yes. and it's an amazing <laughs> amazing person i apologize i realize it's two hours recording i'm sure you have a very busy day ahead of you so i will try to get through these quickly um very quick um uh i wanted to bring up a very very fascinating article G- games and shop biz published today uh, what should you charge for your indie game? Go uh, check this out. It goes into everything. Just a quick uh, things. Price affects consumer psychology. You need to recoup your investments, surveying competitors, collecting competitive data from Steam, using user tags, blah, blah, blah. Very, very fascinating stuff. If you want to see what it looks like when indies are trying to figure out what price they should put on a game, go check this out. This was incredibly fascinating. I found today. It doesn't really fit into the show, but I did want to implore people. Go check that out. That was that was very, very cool. I want to read that. Yeah, yeah, very cool. I'm going to read that. Actually, I didn't get to read all of it because uh, I had to get rid of his show, but I'm reading reading that tonight uh, for sure. And then this is going to be quick. UK, uh, July, top 20 games, uh, digital and physical. We're only going to do the top 10 because we don't have a lot of time. Uh, top 10, uh, um, EA, UFC 4. Uh, number 9, WWE 2K22. Number 8, The Quarry. Number 7, Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Must have been a sale. Nintendo Switch Sports uh, does not include digital, so it would be higher if it did. Red Dead Redemption 2, FIFA 22, Grand Theft Auto 5, Lego Star Wars, The Skywalker Saga, uh, F1 2022. You can tell it's UK. It's got F1 there. Yeah. Number one title. Uh, not too surprising, honestly. Uh, FIFA, of course, is huge in the UK. Nintendo Switch ports in number six without digital sales. So it would be even higher. It wouldn't be shocked if it was four or three. Uh, narrowly edging out Grand Theft Auto 5 there. Um, and I still am shocked Grand Theft Auto 5 is on a top selling list. It's still. I'm shocked Red Dead 2 is up there. Me too. I feel like, didn't they just end support for the multiplayer? They, like, they did. There must have been a sale. Like, that's why Call of Duty Black Ops 3 has to be here. That has to have been a sale or something. Yeah. That, that like pumped up so. these numbers because there's no way that should be on there. Uh, and surprisingly, and, and again, not including digital, but I do want to bring it up, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, number 13 on the list. That's not great. Not great for that game. Again, it doesn't include digital, but not even cracking the top 10 when the game is brand new. It did come out um, 
uh later in that month but it's still 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 that game was always niche though it is, was always niche. It is very niche but not cracking the top 10 it i wonder if that i wonder if the whatever number they have was satisfactory to them quick yeah, date update fun. Tuesday, August 23rd, Jeff Keighley hosts Gamescom opening night live. Two-hour showcase of more than 30 upcoming games live from Cajon, Germany, streaming everywhere. 8 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. I will, must uh, be honest, I am not surprised because this is a very slow year. Uh, I was not very um, excited about Summer Games Fest, so maybe this will be good. But when I hear two-hour showcase, uh, I, I get a little scared. Because the last I one was two say, hours. Keely, I don't know. I think it was on the Friends Per Second podcast with Skill Up and a bunch of other people. Um, Jeff Keeley's going to be a co-host on that show soon. And I think he's been talking about there's going to be some slight surprises, some stuff you wouldn't expect here. Maybe not like big surprises, but just out of left field stuff. So maybe worth paying attention to. I don't know if it's going to be two hours worth of attention. I, I will, instead of watching it, I will be having it on. You know what I mean? Like, I will have it yeah, on, yeah. but I will not be watching It'll it. Be Last one I watched, and I was like, this was a waste of two hours. Like, this should have been mm -hmm. half half the time. Certainly, certainly. Yeah, Metal Slug Tactics has been moved to 2023. Kirby's Dream Buffet has a trailer, and it's going to be out August 17th on the eShop. And then... Yeah, well, um, announced today turn-based rpg avatar generations based off the avatar tv show will soft launch on iso and android in canada denmark south africa and sweden in august developer square enix london mobile announced in a partnership with paramount consumer products access will expand to additional territories in the months following avatar generations is a new free-to-play rpg adventure based on nickelodeon's beloved anime series avatar last emitter is being developed in partnership with vancouver-based studio navigator games um, this is a quick reminder. We covered this before, but just as a reminder, don't forget to tune in for the second THQ Nordic digital stream. That's going to be tomorrow. So if you catch this, um, as soon as we go live, go check it out or watch the VOD. Um, they said SpongeBob, Crypto, Ivan, or Cutter may be there, but they didn't want to spoil anything. I, I don't know. What, I, I know what SpongeBob is, so I don't know what the other things are. I know crypto. That's uh destroy all humans. Oh, that's the alien guy. Oh, I thought that was, but I was like, no way, that's true. Oh, uh, and they said uh, there's gonna be 14 plus games there. That was a, uh, all. This is from a tweet that they sent out. Now, very quickly, the PlayStation Plus games catalogs are as follow. This is gonna be the month of August. Uh, blah, 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 blah. pulling it up right now. Boom. Here we are. I can read through these if you want. You uh, oh, no, uh, <laughs> yeah. If you'd like to, go ahead. Okay. So uh, the big highlight for this little drop here are going to be some games for the Yakuza franchise. So Yakuza 0 is coming, as well as Yakuza Kiwami, which is a remake of the first game, and Yakuza Kiwami 2. So look forward to those if you're a big Yakuza head. And we got more games from that franchise coming later down the line. We're also joined here by Dead by Daylight, the uh, multiplayer uh, little hide em up So you can go ahead and play that horror game. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands is coming as a part of the Ubisoft Plus partnership. That game is solid, so go ahead and check it out. And also Bug Snacks. If you didn't claim it on PlayStation Plus long ago when the PS5 first came out, now's your chance to play that again. That is a modern classic. And also you have some other smaller titles here, such as Monopoly Plus, Monopoly Madness, Uno, Trials of Mana, and a game that I recommend and talked about earlier in the show, Metro Exodus. That is all available August 16th. Very exciting PlayStation Plus game catalog for the for the month. Very solid. Again, uh, for all those Yakuza fans, Dead by Daylight is still going. That's still a game that's actively getting support. They recently got Resident Evil characters into the game. I, Albert Wesker, um, I think Chris Redfield's in it, I think. It, I think. Got, or maybe the yeah, sister I is. It's, I think it's Redfield and the and her sister, Claire, and yeah. uh Wesker. I think those three. Yes, that sounds right. Definitely. That is the news for the week. So quickly going to ask, like I do at the end of every show, I love asking my co-host another question. What do you have queued up for the week? This is going to be a game, a movie, a podcast, TV show, a book, a manga like Ro did last week. Anything. I admit, I must ask you, what do you have queued up for the weekend? Um, I'm planning on playing a little bit more Stranger Paradise. Like I said, I do want to go ahead and complete that one. Uh, I do really feel I feel like watching a movie. I don't know. I just feel like it's funny that you say that. Um, so I uh, I pitched to my wife that so I'm I'm very I would say movie dumb. Like I feel like I have not watched like a lot of like classics end quote or like bigger movies. Yeah. So 
I pitched to her like, hey, how about every two weeks we have movie night where like maybe we get pizzas or like popcorn and stuff mm -hmm. and we watch like a classic movie or something. And she loved the idea. So we're making like a list achievers. If that's something that you're like, oh, I have an idea. Put it down below. If if it's if it's popular, I probably haven't watched it. So like throw it down there. Uh, it, you know, big yeah. gaps in the 80s to the 2000s. So anything in that you're probably free roam to to go through uh it, it, very huge gaps so if you if you have like one that comes to your mind i probably haven't watched it like what one of the like for instance godfather uh you know big you big, need to watch godfather. <laughs> <laughs> big movies like that where it's like uh you know I, people should have assumed like if you have like a uh interest i have not seen it um i kind of took over i apologize what, what were you saying please um now nah, it's just I, I feel like watching a movie so one of these days i think i'm gonna finally get around to some of the stuff in my watch list recently i found out this is a spoiler for indiana jones and the kingdom of the crystal skull so if you don't want to know your about, tweet yeah, you, you, you do you want to know about it do not click away this this movie is not worth not being spoiled for please okay please okay. please i saw this tweet i fucking laughed so hard because i remembered watching that movie <laughs> apparently indiana jones and the kingdom of the crystal skull has aliens in it and i didn't know this i knew it was bad and i knew people hated it i didn't I, and i know indiana gets into a fridge to stop it to hide from a nuke or something but like i didn't know that shit was in this movie so i'm like oh fuck i really want to watch that now so probably gonna prioritize that sometime soon uh and there's just a lot of shit on my watch list that i just I got way too many movies that I'm, I just see and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to watch that at some point. And then for whatever reason, I don't get around to it. Drag Me to Hell, I really want to watch because I'm digging Sam Raimi after the uh, Multiverse of Madness. I had never seen a Sam Raimi movie before that. And Spider-Man are the only Sam Raimi movies I've ever seen. So when I saw Multiverse of Madness, I'm like, this guy's good. What other stuff does he have that isn't horribly violent? And Drag Me to Hell is PG-13. So I'm like, I could probably take it. Um, so I think I'm going to watch that. Uh, and, you know, I'm just going to go through here and just watch some of the random movies that I've added here. I had a friend from my old job say I should really watch Moneyball. So I'm going to prioritize. I heard that's Moneyball. great. Yeah, that's one that I want to watch. Pee Wee's Big Holiday, the reboot of Pee Wee Herman. Um, I like that first one from the 80s a lot. So I want to watch that. Uh, and some other ones. The third Mummy movie I never got around to seeing. Uh the virgin suicides i kind of want to see but i think i have to be like in a very specific mood to watch something that depressing also i'm thinking about ending things always want to see that but once again depressing got to be in the right mood so i'm gonna watch something this week i will watch a movie i'll probably write about it on my so you'll probably see it. if i can add a few recommendations um if you're looking for something relatively new um do you like horror look you, you said drag me to hell is that something that you like i like thrill i like feeling the thrill i don't like hyper violence especially in live action movies where my brain can separate it in a, in a game but in a movie if people are like getting chopped up and shit it triggers me and i don't like did you it. did you but ever watch any of the jordan peele movies oh yeah i love all of them those okay. aren't that violent okay to i was gonna recommend those because like those are the perfect like horror movies but they i mean like there's barely any death in the movie and you know not spoil things, but there's, there, there is. But death, there's violence, but it's more like, oh, that's a fucked up situation, rather than you're seeing the skin get removed. Yeah, like, we're not having a saw situation it. shit happening. Yeah. yeah, I don't do saw. I don't do hostile. I don't do any of that type of stuff. I don't do the Pekevsky tapes. None of that shit. I actually had a really small tangent, real quick. And this is the last thing I'm gonna say, I had a small tangent there years ago where I found this YouTube channel that would just tell you what happened in all these fucked up movies without showing you. And I was addicted to that channel. Whoa. I always want to know, I want to know what happens, but I don't want to see it. And so I was like, Ooh, tell me what happens in the saw movie. So what happens in hostel. And then it got more and more deprived. Cause it was, it wasn't just horror movies. It was just depressing and dark movies. And it would tell you what happened in all these really fucked up movies. And every day I would come home or I would go to work and talk to my friend, Albie. She's still my best friend. And I would just be like, oh, I watched this video about this movie. And I told her the whole plot stops. She's like, this is depressing. Don't talk to me about these movies anymore. Yeah. Like, oh, and shit. After, yeah. It was putting me in a bad headspace. So I had to cut that shit off. But yeah, I a, a, a fucked up premise will interest me, but I don't want to actually see something fucked up. Just the thought of it is just enough. And then I want to back away. I've wanted to watch everything everywhere all at once. That seems fascinating. Oh, um, oh my god, watch that. <laughs> I have not watched it. I, 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 it's on the tip of my tongue of wanting to watch it, so I very much want to watch it. Um, <laughs> that's everyone's reaction when I say I haven't watched it, so I very that's kind of probably, that might be the first one we watch. I don't know. 
But I very much oh, do yeah. want to watch something. Um, uh, I'm going to give you a lot of recommendations offline. As soon okay. as this podcast is done, I'm just going to go through my watch list <laughs> and tell you everything. Um, in in uh, the uh, interest of time, because I've kept you for far too long, I very much appreciate you joining me, though. Um, yeah, no problem. Uh, I'll I'll leave the achievers with that. Uh, aside from what I have queued up, uh, you know, a few movies. I am in the middle of Better Call Saul. Fantastic. I mean, really fantastic show. Fantastic show. Incredible drama. Incredible dialogue. I'm uh, immediately sucked into the show after episode one. If you haven't watched it, check it out. Watch Breaking Bad. Great show. I, I'm the the show is ending soon, so I'm trying to stay away from the spoilers because literally the final season's airing right now. So like, I'm sure I'm gonna get garbage uh, sent at me of spoilers, but. It won't be the end of the world. Um, aside from that, Colts of the Lamb, because I just bought that. I'll be playing that tonight. Uh, that's it. That's it. Um, I very much appreciate it. Anything you want to leave with the Achievers before we go? Uh, you guys, I've been on here enough times. VGU.TV is the website. Uh, EJ Sponge 61 is where you can see me. In the Twitter. descriptions as well. I, sh- I, I always forget. I need to open with that. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Every time there's a co-host, check the description. Their stuff is always there. Their Twitters, their YouTube channels, etc. Yes, indeed. Players Club Podcast is the podcast I do. Uh, recently, we did a State of Cloud Gaming episode with uh, Aaron, I think, Sini. I want to make sure I'm saying his name right, from Speaking of Stadia Podcast. So uh, if you want to just get an update on what's going on with Stadia, what's going on in Amazon Luna, a lot of these services, listen to that episode. I, I was really happy with that, even if my dumb ass forgot to use the right mic. But That I sounds was- fascinating. I'm actually going to check that out. Um, yeah. That is very it's cool. A shorter episode, too, thankfully. <laughs> uh, no, that's cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You guys just watched a two and a half hour podcast, so I thank God. Um, yeah, I'll definitely be checking that. That's very fascinating. I, I definitely want to watch that. Um, yeah, th- thank you guys so much for sticking two and a half hours for the show. We really appreciate it. Uh, aside from that, nothing to really to update about the channel. Just remember, like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend. Uh, podcasts, uh, sorry, patreon.com slash achievers, five star reviews on all the podcast services. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Remember, go chief. <laughs>